the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Hello, beautiful people. It is Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, and this sports show shall begin right now. Yeah. Can't thank you enough for joining us here at youtube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. You all are the absolute best. The weather is turning here in Indianapolis, so obviously the moods and vibes are at an all-time high. We're in the middle of... You know, quite a run here in the sports world that doesn't really matter to us, although there is some NFL news today that we'll chit-chat about. We are currently sitting 120 days away from NFL football. Hell yeah. That's a nice even number. Yeah. 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 Four months right there. 100 days is around the corner. Let's go. Here we go, boys. Right there. Let's go. Here we go, boys. So that's exciting, and uh, as is today's lineup, we have Sham Sharania joining us in about 10 minutes to chit-chat about all things happening around the NBA. A couple injuries. There's a COVID case. Whoa. Steve Kerr got COVID. Oh, shit. Hope oh. he survives. Uh, COVID also took out uh, Charlie McAvoy of the that's Boston right. Bruins that's the other right. day. What's COVID doing? Huh. Sneaking hmm. back in a little bit. What's COVID doing? I haven't no, been in the not. news. You know, if we know COVID like we think we do, okay, mm-hmm. which we do, they aren't going to miss the opportunity to make it about COVID. <laughs> one, one last time. time. They're petty. You're right. Ain't that right, Ty? That's exactly right. That, well put. That is what COVID's going to do. Yeah. Uh, Ian Rappaport will join us in the second hour. Can't wait to chat with him about potentially things that he's hearing or making up or isn't real or maybe is real. Sure. We've learned about more games being uh, announced. Mm-hmm. Shout out to us on Christmas. We get Russell Wilson and Matthew Stafford oh, yeah. Christmas oh, Day. Here we go. That was broken today by the NFL. So now we know nine of the games that are happening this upcoming season. That's a masterpiece there. Now, obviously, we got to hope that everybody that's in this photo is healthy by December 25th, sure, right. which is always the issue when you're trying to project out games. And Thursday night football, for instance, is even more difficult because you can't flex that game like Sundays you can for Sunday night football because who knows what games are actually going to be important in December because with injuries taking a couple people out, teams that we thought were great could be fucking gone. So let's just hope that all four of these dudes are playing and everybody else. But December 25th, the day that Jesus Christ Hell yeah. came out of a virgin in a barn. Mm-hmm. That's right. We get a treat. We got a game. Come on. At Tone Diggs, what are you excited about? I just Tom? did some research. Um, pretty exciting news. I think we're going to get some more games on Christmas. It is on a Sunday this year. Oh. oh. So that's not so, that cool then. <laughs> we don't even get an extra... <laughs> God damn Wait, it. what? The, yeah, this is kind the of NBA is pissed. So, I was, I was looking so the NBA is so mad. <laughs> Not good. So mad because there's like an agreement. It feels like with the NBA kind of just owning Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. LeBron's always on Christmas mm-hmm. Day. It's almost when the season starts for, yeah. in some people's minds. But now that it's on Sunday, the NFL is like, "Hey, sorry <laughs> about it. Like, hey, we had. To, remember, God had this day. Yeah, mm-hmm. God had it for a long, long time. That's right, long, long time. And then we said, "Hey, sorry about it." Fucking, this is our day now. Mm -hmm. The day of rest, the seventh day, is now our fucking day. It is the NFL day. So NBA, sorry about it. Your day, Christmas Day, fell on our day. We got. They're probably gonna have. No, they've already announced the international games. I'm surprised they don't have an international game like 9 a.m. Yeah, all the way through like 12. Then have a one. Like I'm surprised they're not doing that. But that's exciting news. I'm pumped up about Christmas and I guess a full slate. (laughs) Of football. This is on CBS, too. Nickelodeon, this is a 4.30 game. So what's the Sunday Night Football game? Good question. Be? That'll be able to be flexed. That'll be a great game as well. Yeah, huh? So we have a good... All right. So they'll stack, they'll stack the card on Christmas Day. Yeah. Any Chiefs Bills or something like that? Everybody's at their house. Yeah. Or somebody's house. Just watching TV. Oh, yeah. Just staring at the television. Crushing sports. I would guess. Gorged out of their mind. Mm-hmm. Eating too much. Yeah. Eating too much. Can't really go anywhere. The weather might be something, and all your friends that maybe you would hang out with, they're all at something. So it's a big time TV day. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Ratings are going to be through the roof. Gambling. Cowboys oh, are going to be the Sunday night game. Let's talk about the Cowboys a little bit. Uh, that's from Ty Schmidt. Good transition here on this glorious Tuesday, May tenth, because. 
we have witnessed the final days of a mayor in an American city. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You know, the mayors around the country and around the world were put into a position where they had to do a lot more than previous mayors had had to do. When old COVID, that rat bastard, mm -hmm. came around, local governance had to do a lot more, make a lot more decisions, be a part of the process of affecting a lot more people's lives, as opposed to just ribbon cuttings, no offense to mayors, but normally it is all glitz and glamor, very minor things. The world became a mayoral issue mm -hmm. all of a sudden. And everybody who was eyeballing mayors, like, hey, you, it really matters now what you're doing to my life, my business, the culture of our city going forward. Indianapolis, you know, it's bouncing back, but I assume there's a lot of cities that have a lot of different decisions that have to be made so the mayors have become much more important i think in recent history than they had been maybe forever yeah maybe for probably i'm not 100 sure so with that being said we thought a mayor maybe made a bad decision about covid or maybe sure. misread some things was you know the loudest bad decision a mayor could make right mayor dallas made the worst decision oh, yeah. not good oh, boy. <laughs> this mayor of dallas and mayor eric johnson i mean Congrats on getting uh, candidacy. Yeah, winning. that's right. Good run. Campaign, he won. Mm -hmm. <laughs> NFL on CBS says, if the NFL announced a new expansion team, what city do you think most deserves it? Hmm. Now, I think a lot of people, and I think we're playing serious maybe mm -hmm. in our uh, right ears. If we can turn that down, I think there's an echo in my right ear. And it's, I don't like listening to me begin with. I'm only listening to this show one time, and that's when it's live. Uh -huh. <laughs> there's too much me there. But whenever they project this question, a lot of people say, oh, maybe San Antonio. Mm -hmm. right? San Antonio's a city, of the, uh, city that gets thrown out there. Yeah. Uh, there's other cities that have been getting mentioned. London's even being talked uh -huh. about mm -hmm. as a team. Austin. Austin, Texas, because they are now the home of space. Yes. So true. if space wants to come down, check out an NFL game, you got Texas Longhorns, you got NFL game, maybe that'll be a, a, a thing. A lot of people said the Lions should maybe move. You said that. Yeah, to, yeah, well, to Montana. To Montana, because uh, American Lions now are actually out yeah. there. Nonetheless, the mayor of Dallas had an answer and said the answer is Dallas. Why? We're about to pass that sorry sack of shit city, Chicago. <laughs> oh. Zito, you do not deserve that. Uh, Zito's fixing a problem in the back, by the way, so he didn't get to defend his city. <laughs> we actually like Chicago. Chicago Metro and become the number three metro in the U.S., which would make us the largest U.S. Metro without two teams. Football is king here. Dallas needs an expansion team, and we would be able to sustain two NFL teams better than L.A. Huh. or New York. Whoa. Interesting. So I didn't even know that Dallas was on the move up in the largest cities in America or whatever. Congrats to Dallas. Yeah, that's huge. Congrats, nice. Dallas. Congrats to Mayor Eric Johnson for mm -hmm. uh, winning the mayorcy of a city that might be number three overall in the entire country. And follow-up, that's Cowboy City, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Mayor. I mean, America's team. You would think they would at least be Dallas's team. Mm. Mayor Johnson's like, nah, 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 fuck that. We want another squad here that Jerry ain't got. And Jerry's walking into his office this morning, dumping more salt on an Egg McMuffin or whatever the hell he was eating <laughs> mm -hmm. there on Hard Knocks. And he's saying, Mayor Johnson it is? Is that his fucking name? <laughs> I will call this team the Arlington fucking Cowboys <laughs> tomorrow. Yeah. You tell Eric to delete his fucking tweet. You tell Eric to say thank you to the Cowboys every single day, or I will call us the Arlington Fort Worth fucking Cowboys tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That is probably what's taking place. And I love the fact that we just learned a lot about Dallas and Dallas being conversated about. But there's no way this guy wins uh, mayorship again. If we know anything about the Dallas is a cow... I mean, you're... They're all in down there. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about going wearing the Dallas Cowboys uh, jersey to a grocery store, getting like 20% off on most days. It's mm -hmm. like Jerry Jones has made that city buy into the Cowboys as much as possible, which has made the world buy into the Cowboys as much as possible. That was a wild take. He just wants to look out for the city. Two NFL teams better than one NFL team. But if the one NFL team is like the most popular team in the world, probably not the best idea to try to have the city be split on the whole squad. But, hey, to each their own. Seems like it's probably not going to work out. Do think we should hold a moment of silence for this guy's fucking mayoral career. Moment passed. Mm -hmm. This is dead. Yeah. yeah. By all Jerry. accounts, Jerry Jones is the mayor of Dallas. I don't <laughs> yeah. know why this guy's acting like, you know, he's throwing the gavel down and making decisions. If Jerry wants to do something, I assume the mayor, you know, just basically says, yeah, go ahead, Jerry. And 
He really wants to split up Cowboys Nation, the team that's going to the Super Bowl every goddamn year. He wants to <laughs> try and draw a wedge in that gap. Give me what a if this fucking dude, break. What if Mayor comes out? What if Mayor Johnson comes out and actually cuts a promo? Yeah, we want a team to represent this actual city, the greatness of this city, not the false hype every oh. year oh. of this city. We'd like a team that goes to the Super Bowl, not doesn't make the playoffs or makes the playoffs and loses immediately for the last 30 fucking years with an owner who thinks he's a GM and a coach and a motivator. That's what we're looking for here in Dallas and we think our city can contain it. I will take no more questions. What if he walks off and says that? Oh, the most it, electrifying yeah. mayor of all time. 10 minutes later. Doof, doof. No, 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 no. I can't even talk about that, I don't think. But there is a chance, I guess, that with the... I mean, we allegedly heard about a conversation from Papa John's. Yeah. Uh huh. Which, by the way, anything Papa John says, everybody takes with a massive, great, massive grain of salt. Yeah. Yeah. Snowball size. Yeah. Maybe even snowman size. Sure. Mm-hmm. You know, not just that snowman size mm-hmm. of salt, because who could take anything? A lot of the things he has yeah, said. Sure. Papa's a would, would yeah. warrant the thought, like, oh, anything else that flows out of this mouth, we should probably. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that. Although. He did say the day of reckoning was coming, and three months later, COVID started. So maybe Papa does know something. Was it a Papa prophecy? Is this something? Hey, that, oh, that's that, just what maybe people were thinking, is that Papa knew COVID was coming, and he tried to warn us, but he did it. No, that was probably something to do with the yeast and the dough. Or yeah, something. true. I mean, who knows, mm-hmm. with the better ingredients, better pizza. But anyways, the way he talked about Jerry calling him and wanting to make a move or whatever, kind of a political game, you're the advertiser. Let's assume in the city of Dallas, Jerry probably knows what? every person that's anybody yes. down yeah. there. Yeah. The amount of marketing he's done for the city of Dallas too, I would assume that he's like, hey, have we not been mm-hmm. a good relationship together? Why are you trying to tear down my fan base? I, I, <laughs> that is that's a wild move, but I like the fact that the mayor put on for his city, but there's gonna be consequences. Everybody talks about freedom of speech and not being freedom of consequence. This dude had a tweet, probably had a promising uh, political career. Mm-hmm. He went to Harvard, Princeton, and Penn. Jesus. <laughs> Pretty good. Harvard, Princeton, and Penn. That's half the Ivy League, this guy. <laughs> uh, Penn Law, I believe, is uh, where he went to. Wow. All of that, Bruce said, wants all those schools just to piss off Jerry Jones and ruin his entire career. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which is potentially what's going to happen here. Well, whether it's intentional or not, and whether, you know, he, you, you can't offend Jerry. You know, if he perceives something like this, and it kind of is, it's, I mean, oh, you know, yeah. we're talking about splitting the entire, like, whether he did it tongue in cheek and was kind of kidding. You joke about that. You cross Jerry in the state of Texas. You're done for. I don't mm-hmm. care who you are. Yeah, just and maybe that's just our perception from outside in. Who knows what actual reality is? But boy, this does not feel like the right decision. I'm a- I'd like to. I'd like to think um, that. Hey, I'd love to cheer for the Dallas <coughs> Command. No, we can't sure. cheer for the Commanders. The Dallas, Dallas Demons. The Dallas Demons. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. I'm on Demon Cities. Like, there's only a, maybe Jacksonville in the entire NFL where you can add a second team and potentially get more fans than the current NFL team. Like, there's no NFL city that wants a fucking second team that's going to root for another fucking team, right? Yeah, and LA is a melting pot of Correct. humans. Everybody moves to LA from their town. So they always had a lot of. You know, there's like a Steelers bar, a Lions mm-hmm. bar. I think I was even at a Lions watch party. At Hell yeah. Yeah, Lions <laughs> bar had mm-hmm. there, like, because people move there. You know, I'm going to go make it. I'm going to go do it. Mm-hmm. And hopefully everybody does. I know there's a lot of locals in LA as well from people that have moved in there or from way back or whatever the case. So I think there is a lot of fans to be earned still mm-hmm. in those cities. Like, hey, you can sway Correct. them. If this is going to be their new home, like, they're going to be there. How many new people are moving to Dallas? I don't know those actual stats that you're going to be able to get. Maybe like, hey, new home, new thing. But why? Why wouldn't you join the Cowboys if you're moving to Dallas? It's the only time you're allowed to be a fan of the team that's going to be on primetime television every single day. I just, I don't, I don't know how you, I don't know how you garner new fans in those cities. That's a great question to bring up. Jacksonville, now their fans are going to get a little loud. They all dress like fucking sure. clowns because they hate mm-hmm. the way the team was run. Uh-huh. But back whenever they were the expansion team at the beginning, and Brunel was there, and uh, Fred was yeah. running all over the place, and they also had Brant Boer. Playing right. on special teams. Oh, yeah. Nobody's ever heard of him. But <laughs> MJD. Awesome. MJD was after Fred. Yeah. Kind of the transition. Jimmy Smith. They had some fans. Yeah, yeah. They had some fans. So I assume they would come back if they were good. But if you go to a city and you're you're not good, you're not going to have any fans. You go to a city and you're good, you'll get fans regardless. But it feels like Dallas is going to be a tough place to market against. Because the rest of the NFL hasn't figured out how to market against you. I, I looked up the stats. Um, it's Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington, and then the Houston's area. Those are the two fastest growing metro areas in the u.s um they both 
Dallas, Fort Worth, Arlington gained like 1.3 million people in the last 10 years. Okay, so maybe you can pick up some new fans. Yeah, hey. booming. That's what the mayor's saying. Fuck the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. We got a bunch of people from out of town that want to be fans of an NFL team. They don't like the way Jerry operates. Overhyped, they say. Overhyped, overhyped. Hey, Jerry, you keep your fans. We're just going to build a well, publicly funded stadium right over here. That's right. Mm-hmm. We're going to take a lot of money. It's going to be very big. It's going to yeah. be just as big as yours. Actually, we need to use yours now that we're thinking about it. Uh, let's pivot to the NBA, to the association. Joining us now from the stadium and the athletic, an absolute superstar insider, not only of today, but definitely of the future. Ladies and gentlemen, Sham Sharanya. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, dude? Pat, what's going on? How was how was WrestleMania this weekend? Well, <laughs> well, it was, it was WrestleMania backlash. Please learn Come products. Come on, Shams. <laughs> okay, it was two different Shams. shows. It was backlash from WrestleMania. Shams, but it was great. Gotcha. It was great. Rhode Island, the fine people of Rhode Island. It was great up there. Had a blast. Yeah. Rem Reigns and Bloodline still won. Of course. <laughs> okay. Per usual. They're, we the ones. Because you the twos, mm-hmm. and we the ones. Hell yeah. Anyway, Shams, let's get the basketball. Uh, a lot going on in your world right now. COVID came back. This son of a bitch. We thought he was done. So how'd this whole thing go? We remember Paul George, I think it was last game of the series, ended up getting uh, COVID and missed the game. That was allegedly self-reported in this particular, uh, from what we heard. Uh, Charlie McAvoy, Boston Bruins, Ooh. two nights ago, I believe, or uh, last yeah, night? Sunday. Two nights ago, two nights ago uh, tested positive for, or missed the game because of COVID. These are very rare nowadays. Steve Kerr, head coach of the Golden State Warriors, the team that a lot of people think could potentially go on and win this thing, he's out because of COVID. How serious is this, and what was the process to get here, Shams? Well, serious enough that he's he had to get tested. He had tested positive, and he's he missed last night's game, and there's obviously an expectation that he's going to miss game five and possibly the remainder of the series if it goes beyond a game five in Memphis tomorrow. But Steve Kerr, this is a guy that's in the public light, right? So he's going to be getting interviewed every day with the media. Media sees him. He's around. He's the one that's front-facing every single day. So it it was interesting. In game three of that series, we saw him on the sideline with a mask. And masks haven't been regulated or really uh, enforced at all in the league in, in the last few months. And so for Steve Kerr to be with a mask on the bench, that was a clear indication to a lot of people that, you know, either he was exposed, something happened. Um, and Anthony Slater, one of the Warriors writers, he said the uh, last night that you, you could kind of tell Steve Kerr's voice was a little down, that he might have had some symptoms. And so uh, to me, this is a case of a guy that is, is front facing. He's one of the faces of that organization. And it was clear that he had some symptoms, maybe some exposure, had to get tested, came back positive. The Warriors are preparing right now to play without him for game five. Uh, we'll see how much time he exactly missed. But the goal is to get him, you know, testing negative again before he can get back on the on, on the court. So they're not routinely testing for COVID though at this point. It is no, no. It's it, it's all by self. Uh, you you have to uh, self-report symptoms or have outward symptoms. I mean, in most cases, guys are all dealing with things, right? Like allergies are, are a thing. Oh, right oh, yeah. Yeah. The cold is still a Jeez. thing, and so guys are going to be dealing with things off off and on. And so once you feel like you have symptoms that rise to the level of COVID nineteen. You get tested, and Steve Kerr, unfortunately, came back uh, positive. We'll see how long he continues to test positive. Well, and all, uh, we hope he survives, too, mm-hmm. you fucking asshole. I mean, yeah, yeah geez, what are we doing here? Shams. I mean, you don't be such a bad guy. <laughs> Jeez Louise. Don't want to go from one uh, dramatic situation, controversy, to another, but let's do it. Unwanted hugs. Yeah. Unwanted <laughs> hugs in Dallas of Chris Paul's family caused the scene the other day in which we were told, like Chris Paul said, uh, that it, somebody put hands on Got his hands fam- on him. Yeah, yeah, hands that, on that, his that's family. big. I mean, as soon as I, I read that it's it's like fisticuffs is there fighting is there are there punches thrown like what are we talking about and then yeah the statement comes out that the dallas put out uh last night that i reported on they said unwanted hugs and let me clear something up i'm told this is how it was described by the paul family as far as listen i don't know if the words unwanted hugs came out of their mouth that's a very <laughs> uh, particular way of phrasing it but clearly it was it was attempts by those by two what appeared to be kids really you know younger men uh younger aged people uh that were trying to deliver hugs to the paul family his mom uh his wife was also in attendance at the game on mother's day obviously nothing that those two wanted to endure from these fans and those fans have been banned until 2023 but i think there was a lot of confusion online like did the mavericks really do their research did did they really investigate i'm told there was a full investigation security was involved nba security was involved and that was what was described to them 
uh, by the people on the scene. I think I added to the problem when I said it was a drunk white doofus that did this. It, it, was it a team? Do we know who was banned until 2023? Because I saw the, another alternate angle of a video. Looked young, but nowadays everybody looks yeah, so yes. damn young. You know, like 22-year-olds look like they're 15 at this point, and some of them, and then some look like they're 35. I mean, it is a wild time to be alive right now. Was it children that did this, and how did it all start? Did we find out? Uh, the people that were there around the scene told me it was two younger, uh, y y younger, younger people. One was obviously a, a man. I don't know if the second was a man or a female. I assume Maybe a man, but you never know. Yeah. Um, but definitely two younger uh fans uh as far as age so listen whether whether they were drunk or not it's not acceptable you shouldn't be putting your hands on anyone you shouldn't be giving hugs you shouldn't be tapping you know there was some talk about uh you know i saw kenny smith last night said that chris paul's mom said that she was being tapped on the back maybe that was their way of trying to deliver hugs i'm not sure uh either way just not called for to me, it's just really petty, though. You know, it's not like yes, it's anyone was getting punched. It's not like anyone was, 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 you know, getting swung on. It's just petty and stupid for, you know, for, for whether it's taps, hugs. That's just petty. That's just stupid. Get those guys away. Give them a year to debrief and, and hopefully be better fans in 2023. Yeah, don't be a nuisance in public, I guess. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't sound anything like what we thought it was originally. No. no. You know, and I think that is where most of the world is. We hope everybody's safe, but... I mean, I thought, I because Chris Paul was about to go fight. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. he was about to go fight. Chris Paul, Chris Paul. And again, I don't know if, if Chris thought something had happened that didn't happen. I don't know if the security oh, that yeah. was there, his security or the team security, the you know, reported bit. something oh. mm -hmm. back that might not have happened. I'm not sure on all the details. I wasn't there on that video, but what I do know is that exactly what was said to the security yesterday in the investigation was that it was unwanted. Whether it was taps, you know try to hug hu hug the, the family members uh, by those fans that might have might or might not have been uh, drunk. Shams, or, you need to keep a straight face when you're reporting this, okay? We're allowed to laugh at this entire thing. You have to keep a straight face while reporting right. the unwanted hugs. You hear me? Because we don't need unwanted hugs fucking running rampant. No, no, no we don't. don't. No, I, I don't think I've ever heard fans? that phrase ever, but, you know, it's first for everything. Ban all hugs. I mean, hugs would be a little bit uncomfortable if it was an unwanted. I mean, I've been a part of an unwanted hug. Yeah. Oh, yeah. On Mother's Somebody's Day? forced me in. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. It, there's nothing worse than that. <laughs> what if they grab the head, too? Like, uh, that's a force. Come here. Really grab you. Right, we do not know each other like that. Yeah, don't touch What me. are you doing? I'm going to put my hands around you <laughs> and grab your hands. All right. Oh. All right. This is a forced hug. Um, <laughs> this is unwanted. Let's move on here. Uh, John Morant, is he all right? He's become the superstar of this playoffs, and then he's out with a knee. That seemed to come from nowhere. How'd that take place? Was that when he was flying through the air? Because he said he ain't scared. He'll go up on anybody. When do we expect him to come back? The uh, NBA is going to miss his highlights over the next few days if it's only a little bit. He, he's been a blast. Away. We've talked about it on this show. Like He's a must-watch on every night. He's become the NBA's you know, top highlight on every night uh, that, that he takes the court. But, um, yeah, I mean, the, the injury that he had, it, it looked tough. Uh, I'm not a doctor. I don't want to diagnose him. There were multiple plays that he might have gotten hurt on. There was a play that occurred early in the fourth quarter of game, game four where he showed out on, on Clay Thompson, seemed to kind of hyperextend the knee. His knee kind of gave out a little bit. He was limping. He played through it, kept going. And then the Jordan Poole incident where Jordan Poole kind of, you know, I guess swiped at his knee. Um, and that's a lot where the Grizzlies were focused on and believing that that was the play that, it, that, 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 uh, that, that had the injury that made that take place. I'm not sure when it took place, but yes, he missed game four. And when you saw the video of him uh, at shoot around on the bench, he didn't do much more than just standing, walking, had a limp, was in sandals during shoot around. That's not a good sign. Obviously, he did not play last night. That's not really a good sign for his status moving forward. Um, I'm not sure whether he'll play in Game 5. It's it, it's not clear yet. Uh, but just the way he looked didn't give a lot of positivity. It's not like this is an ankle injury. Scotty Barnes in the first round had an ankle injury, had a boot, ended up playing two games later. You know, with knee injuries, whether it's a sprain, um, MCL, hyperextension, like these aren't injuries that just – Heal up. Did he have a, a sleeve on, days. Shams? It, it, it'll take him some time if it is anything like that. Did he have a sleeve on, sweats with his sandals? What was it? 
Uh, I mean, he just had sweatpants on, so I, I don't know if he uh, had sleeve the, on underneath. Uh, sleeve on underneath. Yeah. Sleeve I mean, he very on. well might have, right? Because he wasn't wearing shorts, so we didn't see him in that realm. Oh, but I think um, it, it, it's unfortunate because the Grizzlies. We saw them battle all all night last night. Like they they should have won the game, really. Um, and the Warriors took it in the last minute to two minutes, and that's when you need your superstar. You need John ja Morant. Yes, they were twenty and five in the regular season. Yes, they might even play a little bit more freer. The ball move, moves more defensively. They're a little bit more sound. Uh, they have to. There, there's a, there's a, a, a smaller margin for error without John ja Morant. But within those last one to two minutes, when you need, need your dog. superstar the most, they didn't have him. They didn't, they, they didn't win the game. It's tough for me to see them winning this series without John ja Morant. You need a dog out there. <laughs> yep. I hope Jaw's back. He was so fun to watch. I became a massive fan. I actually became part of the uh, the uh, the Grizz Nation. Is that what they're called? Mm. There's other nicknames on Twitter, I think. The Bear Cave. There's be- you guys are like the leaders of Grizz Nation, Ja Nation, Zion Nation. What? So what? You, guys, you guys have it all. We really like that town in South Carolina. That's uh-huh. right. We really like that That's town right. in South Carolina. Let's move on. Ja, you don't know how long he'll be out for. How about Chris Middleton? This has become fun because you reported that he'll be out for an entire series. Multiple... ESPN podcast and such have thou reported this Middleton probably back by the end of the series. Oh, yeah. This wow. is classic source off. Source off. Source off. Source off. Bang. Dang. 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 All right, so I'm source off here, pal. How do we feel about it? How do, how do ESPN's reporting one thing, you're reporting another. What's going on with Chris Middleton? I'm going to stand by my reporting. Woo! Oh! 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 It is a great Another shot in the source off. Sean says, I'm right, you're wrong. This is awesome. Sorry, we cut you off before you could legitimize your answer. <laughs> but we we're pumped for you. You just won the source off, you feel like. Huh. No, we don't know if you won, but no, you did. No, 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 no. I'm not saying it's a source anything. I'm, I'm just going to stick by what I know. And I'll, you know, Pat, I'm always going to tell you what I know in the real. So that's all That's all we do here. It's facts only. Oh, yeah. on it is a grade two MCL sprain for Chris Middleton. He had the injury um, about three weeks ago. On, on Thursday, it'll be three weeks these grade two MCLs are usually four to six weeks at minimum. We saw Kevin Durant, he missed six weeks uh, earlier in the year. Anthony Davis missed uh, six weeks as well. Th- that's really the, the, the amount of time that you're looking at with a grade two MCL sprain. So he's coming up on three weeks on Thursday. They're going to finish up game seven, uh, I, I believe, by the end of the weekend. They play game Game six, so yeah. Game game five is tomorrow. Course, game mm-hmm. six is Friday. Yes, if mm-hmm. I'm not mistaken, game seven would then be uh, Sunday or Eight. Monday. So he's not going to be available. Just logistically, math wise, uh, Mike Boonholder said last night on the telecast he he's Chris Milton's only just doing light shooting right now. So no, uh, there there's no plan for Chris Milton to return in this series. And oh, yeah. um, that that type of timeline with the grade two would put even his Sorry. his status in doubt for the start of the conference finals. So you hope Chris Milton heals up. He's a big part of the of the Milwaukee Bucks. We saw how much they missed them last night. They need Chris Milton back if they're going to win a championship. Um, but unfortunately, I, I don't. I think they're going to have to get, get by in this series without him. Um, but it, this is a 2-2 series going back to Boston. They have home court advantage now. It's a best of three. Hey, I heard people that spell their name the way he spells his name recover from grade two MCL sprains quicker than well, anybody else. Okay. No. Yeah, KH, right? Isn't that's that right. Oh, yeah. That's, a, that's awesome. That's this is new information. This is new data then, Pat, that I didn't I didn't apply to my research. Well, we've never seen. So. We've never seen. This will literally be the first <laughs> KH Chris to recover from a grade two MCL yeah. sprain. So this will have to be its own. You know, situations are situational. That's right. We'll keep our eyes on all the coverage because people are saying you're wrong. You're saying you're right. We're excited about both of them. Go ahead, Ty. Shams, what's the deal with Ben Simmons? Like, did the Nets know that he was going to have to have surgery? And is there any way, like, post they could veto this trade? Or, like, what, what's going on with his mental state right now? What What's the deal with Ben Simmons? Yeah, the, the trade won't be vetoed. But, I mean, at the end of the day, there's clear – you know, I, I'm not here to, to, to judge Ben Simmons. Like, he – everyone's dealing with their own problems right like everyone deals with one or two issues you know when you talk about players you you know a player could be dealing with something mentally a player could be dealing with something physically they're all human so clearly in this instance ben simmons met with sean marks and the nets front office at the end of the season so that he still is dealing with a mental hurdle that might 
have an impact on his back, could trigger uh, some, some, some of his back issues. But regardless, this is a back issue. I, I think you can't separate the two. I think it can be mental and it can also be physical. And in the physical realm, this is a back issue that he's been dealing with since 2020. Right before the bubble, Ben Simmons had a herniated disc in his back. And the, the bubble and the hiatus allowed him to take some time off. He was able to play in the bubble. Then he had the knee injury. Uh, but this is a back injury that if you don't manage right, it could definitely sprout up. And even if you do manage it right, this is an issue that could that could continue to develop in for you in your back. And so I think at this point, given what happened, uh, he decided to address the matter now. And the goal by all parties is to get him back on the floor. I think everyone wants to see a healthy Ben Simmons in, in body and mind. And I think he is taking steps toward that. I'm, I'm told he's feeling a lot better. And the goal is for him to be playing basketball in the 2022-23 season. When's the 2022-2023 season begin? Well, September is training camp. I think mid to late September is when training camp begins. Uh, I think this will be a rehab process that will go anywhere from two to four months. Um, and so the goal is, again, as September comes around, that he's going to be getting back to doing more basketball stuff. A guy that hasn't played at that point in over a year and a half, uh, you know, you're going to try to be as weary and precautionary as possible. So uh, I think everyone is going to just hope that Ben Simmons can regain some of the form that he had when he was a three-time All-Star two-time all-defensive team member. Didn't, didn't you say or somebody say that his mental was triggering his back injury? Was it potentially the opposite? Was maybe his back and his lack of trust in it making him have lack of confidence in going out there and playing and being good and being able to shoot? And are we not – are we ruling it out completely that he hurt his back learning how to shoot – are we ruling that out completely? Because remember, we saw those videos. I, oh, yeah. I don't, I don't think that's with that, Kyle, uh, Kyle, Kyle yeah. Corver. But, 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 yeah. but what Kyle I will Corver say is that, I, I, listen, I don't know. I mean, it could be. his The back could be a trigger to, to, to the mental. The mental could be a trigger for the back. I think, you know, it's clear One that second. every time that the stress would occur in that back, you know, there might be something mental. You know, either maybe mentally you're dealing with some, you know, you feel like you're dealing with something more in your back. But I I think this much is for sure. There were multiple consultations that Ben Simmons had, right? Like you're getting legitimate doctor diagnoses, right? Whether it's the team doctor, whether it's the doctors in New York, he ended up getting surgery in LA. So you're having doctors, professionals, surgeons tell you that this is a issue in your back. You need surgery on it. So once the medical field and the medical professionals tell you that this is an injury that you have to address and get surgery on, I kind of let go and yeah. like, listen, the doctors are who the doctors are. Like, yeah, you got to take care of that. Yeah, surgeons have never done, never mind. Nope. Never. No, no they wouldn't. Never would. Mm-mm. You couldn't. I got a lot of respect for them, also, obviously. The medicine department, the medicine world, the surgery world, a lot of respect for them. But I don't know how it's taken this long to get to the point that that is the, whatever. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, that sure. Simmons shit is wild. Hey, this Simmons shit is wild. I, I, would I mean, it's, we, we, we've never seen anything like it. It's unprecedented. The fact that you, know, you have a, you have a guy 25 years old in his prime you know didn't play last year had the trade uh request wanted to get out dealing with i mean it's clear that you know the, the goal by all sides now is just get him right body mind and get him on the floor well yeah. he doesn't need to be ready by christmas day because the nfl owns that now oh yeah <laughs> uh, go ahead connor it's on a sunday you guys got no shot go ahead connor yeah sean as you can see ty's got green digs got green pat's got a bunch of green on his desk we're all Celtics fans here. We're glad that they I are finally have back. I a bunch of green. I got green tea. Green this is, batteries. This is Bucks green. You got Green Bay green. This is fucking John Deere green. You got some vitamins That's green. That's AJ Hawk. definitely That's has that Celtic green on right yeah. there. That's they, John, they, John yeah. Deere green. John Deere and the Celtics green. know a good Deere, deer, and that's why it's the same green. I have next to note, in comparison to the other colors on this deck, on desk? I don't know. Not a lot of green. No, there's a pretty good I see no green, green on your desk, Pat. Like Thank none. you. There's a battery right there, Sean. Thank you. Look at that green there's battery. Aaron Rodgers, Packers green. Mm -hmm. Throwback. They need to wear this uniform more, actually. That's more of a Bucks green, too, though. And then this that WrestleMania. Is that a WrestleMania picture? I think that has more green on it. Oh, green hell yeah. Yeah, a lot of green. Hey, lot of, largest quarter <laughs> in the history of the company. A lot of green. <laughs> a lot of green in that A lot one. of green in that photo right there. There sure. it is, right there. It's right there in the middle. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. That's a lot of green there. AT&T Stadium, by the way. And that might be uh, home of the Arlington Cowboys, uh -huh. yeah. if that mayor keeps fucking... <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead, Connor. Yeah, anyways, uh, is Bobby Williams coming back soon? He wasn't playing because of his knee. And then kind of a follow-up scheduling question. Because the Celtics and the Bruins are always in the playoffs, do, they, do the NBA and NHL have to coordinate when those games are because they play in the same arena? Yeah, the coordination is done 
across all leagues and also the arenas themselves, right? So Boston Garden, TD Garden, they got to coordinate, um, you know, the, the schedules for sure. I think uh, they, they definitely – uh, deal with the NHL side Sean's and NBA side. Uh, it sounds Sean's like it sounds like they set the <laughs> schedule based on the <laughs> Boston team. Get to Bobby though. That's what it sounds get like. Get to Bobby Williams, Sean. As him. far as Robert Williams, I'm told he had <laughs> swelling in that knee yesterday that came up. And anytime you know you're dealing with swelling in your knee, that he just had meniscus surgery about a month ago. Yeah. And so you, you're hoping that. It's not much more than, 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 than just swelling, that the swelling goes down. Um, I would expect them to continue to get reevaluated and get treatment the rest of today, um, and they'll see on his status. But Ime Udoka, the rest of the Celtics said last night that the hope is that he plays game five. But honestly, guys, the way that Al Horford looked, I don't even – they might not need him. I mean, Hell I, yeah. I think Rob Williams is amazing. Great player, great defensive player. But Al Horford really turned back the clocks last night. Al Horford? Oh, Dog, get all man. over Giannis. Dog. The same Al Horford? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Shot 78% last night. 48-year-old Al Horford. Bro, let's fucking go. Yeah. Man. Al Horford used to be... Dog. dog still is still is a dog hey good for al go ahead Tom. he wants a ring this year you could tell hell yeah looking at th this year wrong this team best uh -uh. shot for the ring right now all right, all right. Sure. go ahead Tom. shams am i crazy to think that uh james harden's uh 31 point performance was maybe spurred by him getting back to his roots you know a lot of cabarets down in miami uh maybe he went back to get some of that old medicine Tootsies. or yeah or is this uh because you know potential mvp didn't get the mvp and beat his back as well uh let me simplify it for you he made his three point shots and i think that's the difference for james that's harden right now is what we've seen Cowboys. throughout rounds one Cowboys. so far you know in the first two <laughs> games of the second round when he's not making his three pointer it's just it's, it's become tougher for him to create space it's been tough for him to get to the basket and he's getting to the rim at times and not getting foul calls that he was getting three four years ago and i think all of that culminates the injury last year um, you know, the hamstring issue that he dealt with, the first major injury of his career, I think that all that has kind of led to he needs to be a 35-plus a, a percent, to me, three-point shooter on a consistent basis uh, to be able to score the ball 25 points or more on a nightly basis. He had 30-plus points in Game 3. If he keeps making his three-pointer, keeps making his jumpers at a high level, you're going to see the James Harden as far as scoring a bowl. I don't know if we're ever going to see the same – you know, slashing, cutting, getting to wherever he wants on the floor, finishing the James Harden we saw three, four years ago. I think that, that he's going to need to change his game. I think we're seeing it all happen right now. He's in the uh, second floor. Tootsie's getting shoulder rubs. Mm -hmm. The rhythm. Shout out, Drake. Shout out. Shout out, to Drake. Drake. Shout out to Drake for everything. Drake does, Drake's doing everything right now at a very high level. But he's getting shoulder rubs. He's getting back into the step back. Yeah. Falling. Yeah, that's yeah. How I'm feeling. Doc Rivers was fired two weeks ago. Three weeks ago, Doc Rivers was the worst <laughs> coach of all time because he couldn't close the door on Toronto or something mm -hmm. like that. They wanted him out of there. Now Embiid's back. It feels like they're... That mask, they're a new team. Are they? Do they have a shot here? Are they a team that's set they up? They to... definitely have a shot. Tonight's game is the biggest game of the series. There's no question about it. Whoever wins this game, you have a really you have probably the best shot at winning the series. No, you know, I'm not. That's not breaking news there. Two two series. But let's give Joel Embiid some love. He's playing on a torn ligament in his right thumb, his shooting hand. He's playing with an orbital fracture in his face. He uh, had injury. to fucking hate Ben Simmons. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Keep, oh, yeah. going, keep going with all the injuries you're, that he's playing through right now. He's as one and a half weeks recover from a concussion. Like he he was looking woozy at times in game in, in game four in game Ooh, three yeah. and in game four at different points. You back. can tell that playing with that mask, it's 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 adding some extra sweat. It's making his face all scrunched up. So I think you, you got to give him props. For playing this way, you can tell he's on a mission. He wants to win a championship this year, um, and that's why he's playing through these injuries, injuries that, you know, in normal terms, orbital fracture. He's out one to two weeks at least in the regular season. That torn ligament in his thumb, that's multiple weeks and surgery. Um, so he's, he's holding all that back until after the Sixers make a run this year. Well, I can't wait to watch the rest of the association's playoffs. It has been fantastic. Who's going to win it all, Shams? <laughs> You're not going to get me on this. this but guy, I will come say on, this, dude. On this I, I, I think we can make a case. Phoenix, Golden State, I think that Western Conference Finals, I can't wait to watch. I think Dallas even still has a chance right Austin. now. And then out, out East. My gut, though, is that whoever wins out of the Eastern Conference, they're going through such a battle right now. We're seeing Milwaukee and Boston. They're going through the ringer. Miami, Philly, that's a slugfest in and of itself. So 
uh, to me, whoever comes out of the East is going to be getting tested thoroughly before they play uh, whoever comes out of the West. Oh, yeah. Battle tested. Battle yeah. hardened. So Battle. the Celtics are winning it all. Just well, yeah, it could be tired, too. It's too exhausting. No. Very good yeah, chance. No. Very yeah. good chance they win it all. Yeah, yeah. could be. Boom! Either. Well, he just said everybody. Yeah. Could. He no, literally no. just said no. everybody could win. It's not like yeah. he said Boston. Well, he said, how about that? Uh, yeah. what, about Mil- what about Milwaukee? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dallas could potentially. Yeah. He literally yeah. said everything. Thank you, Shams. We appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Shams Sharon. Yeah, he doesn't know about the TD guard. <laughs> no, he has no idea. He said all sports do it. And right then, I was like, well, I don't know if all sports do it. I love him, it. though. I love Sean. He's the best. He's a man. I'm a big fan. I feel like we learn a lot about the association. And, you know, just a few weeks ago, whenever I was having conversations with him, I was just strictly going off what I had seen on the internet maybe become a story. Now I'm watching some of their games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's some good shit going on. Very entertaining. Very Especially entertaining. Towards the end of an NHL game, for instance, like if the Pens are up, I don't know, 7 2. Yeah. Oh, stinks, man. <laughs> man. Yeah, anyway, so if you're like up 7 2 or whatever. <laughs> You can just pop over to an NBA game. There's yeah. going to be something popping off very well. Uh-huh. I mean, it has been an incredible playoff series here for both the sports that we don't really talk enough about uh, because nobody's coming to our show to talk about said sports. Sure. Hey, let's go to a bunch of football stooges to hear what the NBA is doing, yeah. but now there's nothing else to talk about. Yeah. So I'm watching. I'm feeling it. I enjoy it. I think the NBA is doing very, very well. Let's get to a break here. Uh, we'll be back in about four minutes. I cannot wait to answer phone calls on a fiber engine. Oh, hell we're yeah. going to be bangers today. Big, I cannot uh, wait. Pretty big uh, breaking news, too. Well, well let's not go whoa. to a break. What? what? Which, uh, which avenue of life is it in? Uh, football. Oh. Broadcasting. Oh. Ooh. The numbers. Whoa! Gino just said it in my ear. Numbers are out. Ladies and gentlemen, we have breaking news. Not only is Tom Brady projected to become the number one analyst for Fox Sports immediately upon retirement. When is that? Next year? Two years? Five years from now? Who knows? They've already agreed to terms on him going right into the booth when he retires. You experience life as a retired player for six weeks. You ain't going to want to fucking do that when you actually retire. Nope. Let's keep you in the game. Let's keep you yeah. on the road. Let's keep you calling games and experiencing football so we can win you out of this life schedule that you've had forever becoming the greatest of all time at our sport 10 years 375 million dollars no way no way andrew marshawn of the new york post and also a sports business podcast i forget the exact name of it tom brady's contract to call games for fox sports is 10 years $375 $375 million. We don't know when this starts, but we do know that Tom Brady might be thinking about retirement a little <laughs> bit more oh, each coming off season. He said there's a lot of work to be done with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers still, and there's still a job to be finished. You know, he didn't like the way he got knocked out of the playoffs last year, looked to win another Super Bowl, and then bounce into the booth for 10 years. $375 million. Fucking A. Wow. wow. Thank you, Tom. Yeah, congrats, Tom. Yeah, definitely congrats. Sorry. Congrats, Tom. <laughs> definitely congrats. And thank, and thank you, and thank, Tom. And thank you. And thank you, Tom Brady. That is amazing news. That is spectacular news. It's great for NFL fans. We get a chance to hear the GOAT speak. That is the type of money, obviously, that some guy who can go and do whatever the hell he wants, his resume is better than anything, is going to be able to command. Is he worth that much? Yes. Is he worth more than that? Probably. But for a fan, I can't wait to hear his brain spill onto games every single week. Now, you start doing some quick math. It's like 21 work days a year. (laughs) Yeah. About Jesus, good for you. I'm so good for you, Tom. Keep after, it going. Tom. After this season, after he plays this season in Tampa, he will have made 332, 333 million on the field. So his his contract is worth more than what he has done in his twenty three NFL seasons. I can't wait. I fucking can't wait. Unreal. Good so for much hey, That's congratulations, TB yeah. twelve. Appreciate you, man. You're Thank you, best. Tom. Yeah, you were the best, dude. It's more mean. than uh, Aikman and Romo combined. <laughs> No wonder they let Buck go, too. They had an ace in the hole. And now McVay's got to see that, too, right? It's like, oh, okay. It's been real Stafford, but <laughs> they're backing up. Three hundred trucks. And seventy-five million dollars. <laughs> Insane. 
That is so awesome. I am so happy for Tom. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Also, we can't, listen, we're all kind of lost in the sauce of the cash right now. Yeah, yeah. sure. Yeah, okay, a lot sure. Of, a lot of, a lot of zeros. A lot of, <laughs> lot of money. A lot of green out there. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Listening to him call a game will be awesome. Oh, sure. yeah. Unbelievable. We saw the Manning cast. We listened to Peyton kind of break down things. Tom being able to do that while with a Telestrator in the game, call a game. I can't wait to hear how he calls a game. And anything he says is going to be better than anything anybody else says. You know why? Grace the fucking ever do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can't wait. Yeah, like him calling a Patriots game, he's probably the only one who can actually tell you what Belichick is thinking and what he wants to do. I would not just Patriots. Of course, every yeah, game. I, yeah. It's not just every single game he will know exactly why whoever the fuck is trying to do whatever the, they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Hearing it's him just like marvel at who the best quarterbacks are currently, even yeah. like five, six years down the road. <sighs> this is awesome. Good so for Tom. Sweet. All right, we're back in four. Uh you know. We're in a new world all the time. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Tom Brady's going to the booth for that type of cash. That's Shout great news. 18334 McAfee will take some phone calls on the other side on the five hour energy phone line. You all are the best people on earth. We'll see you in four. You know, it's just like I'm frustrated with flying cars because I'm obsessed with that. Like, I, 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 I mean, I want a flying car. And hey, me too. What I got is my phone instead. It's like, well, the future is on your phone really right now. It's not like literally in front of you. You can't get into a flying car. But, you know, your phone has it all. It's like, I don't want this phone. I'm not going to have this phone 14 hours a day like you young people do. No, thank you. Like, I'm not from that generation. Like, you know, give me a flying car. You know? <laughs> and, and, and honestly, when we shut down the Mars missions, you know, we were supposed to be going in 2024 and, and we shut it down. But a lot of people don't realize is, you know, from here to the moon is 208,000 miles roughly. You know, 200, so you can think about that. Well, in this country, you know, a long road trip could be 4,000 miles. and you know, how far it is to Australia, you know, so 200,000 miles, you know, that you think about that, and, you know, that's far, but, but like Mars, think about this, is 250 million miles, 250 million miles. Um, and uh, so, you know, that's a little different thing because, you know, when you go, you know, it, it takes about anywhere from, you know, nine to 11 months to get there, depending on the alignment. <laughs> are you going to fucking Mars? And so, Jim, are you going to Mars? It sounds like you're- <laughs> I wish I was, uh, I, you know, maybe you have, I think you have a chance to do a show from there when you're 80, Pat. <laughs> Hell of a machine. 310J, dude? Oh, mm -hmm. top of the line. That's when they were singing about being sexy. That's right, yes. The 310J, when somebody saw it, they like, that's sexy, and then he was like, the country yeah, music, you're right, it yeah. is. She thinks my right to say, say, oh, oh, look at that. <laughs> Hell yeah. Hell Holy yeah, shit. dude. Hey, that's got a good cockpit in there. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Kind of looks like the Pope Mobile with all the glass around the top there, but it ain't no Pope Mobile because this one's fucking breaking. Grind. Hell yeah. Party in the front, business in the back, am I right? Well, I do believe we got business, business all on both sides. ends. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. The plot down there in the front is, although a good time. It uh -huh. is a good time to get that oh, thing yeah. going. Mm -hmm. Fun. Business is being handled. Dude. Oh yeah. Getting and then on the back, on the back <laughs> side, on the back side, you know, whenever you start cracking earth. Oh. Oh yeah. Oh my you god. You need the excavator back there, the big dog. And you know the thing about the seat on this 310J, it turns. Yeah. yeah. It so it's always in the front. You know, whatever you're working on, business can be on the front, both sides. That's right. Controls all around. We worried about those front tires? No, no not at all. That's how roll. they roll. No, that's no, they, they survive anything. Those are standard deer backo tires. Look at the back so tires, might be, might be Foxy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You Foxy. Yeah, I'm just asking questions. Foxy, it ain't about the front wheels. It's always about the back. That's right. right. All right, because these rear wheel powered vehicles that you would <laughs> never understand. Yeah, you don't know anything about that, Foxy. You have no idea. I would not know. What do you got? I got friends that know. I don't know. Listen, when you're drifting gears, okay, on a rear wheel, oh. especially for 600 or some ponies, what? you got to watch for like any, you know, potholes or debris. Of course. Because sure. you can <laughs> and then hit a tree. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> the back end kicks out. <laughs> and then you won't drive that car ever again. Because how are you not supposed to drift it? And I guess, how are you not supposed to hit a tree? Another tree. <laughs> yeah, right. That's my life. 
Doesn't have to be yours, though. Thank you, Andrew, for calling from the 310J. That's a beautiful piece of machinery. It is. Gorgeous. Take that thing another round. Oh, wow. look at that oh, thing yeah. prop itself up. Lift yeah. Kit. That's why the wheels don't matter in the front bow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a glorious day. <laughs> Welcome back to Tuesday, May 10th edition of the Pat McAfee Show. Oh, yeah. Sham Sharani just joined us, told us all the things that are happening around the NBA. Yeah. But NBA news is not what has this office's energy palpable. <laughs> no, no, no. Thomas Edward Patrick Brady the third, mm -hmm. Junior. You get it. It's probably a third out there somewhere. Greatest of all time. That's right. Is getting paid thirty-seven and a half million dollars per year to call games for Fox. Jesus <laughs> Christ, that is fucking awesome for Tom. Congrats, Tom. Yeah, congrats, to you, Tom. Let's go to the Five Hour Energy phone line. Let's. Uh... Oh, it's a lot of cash. It's a, <laughs> it's a lot of cash. That is not what the report said earlier. No. Two hundred and two fifty. They said yeah. twenty to twenty-five million a year. He's like, yeah, actually, <laughs> yeah. I need maybe seventeen and a half million more than that. Yeah. That's almost that double, sound? Tom. Yeah, yeah, that's what I I'm know. saying. Uh -huh. I wonder if this got done at F one when there was just so much money around. Oh, yeah. In the Fox folks, Shanks was like, "Hey, what's going on? I just left the uh, Rolex uh, thing." Tom's like, "Oh yeah, I just had a Maserati meeting or whatever." Hey, Tom, what's it gonna take? Maybe you call games for us. Uh, I don't know, Lewis. What did you? What did they pay you for? Blah blah blah. They pay me thirty-seven million a year. <clears throat> thirty-seven and a half million a year. <laughs> yeah. Shanks, you got it. Let's have a drink. <laughs> yeah. F1 party happens. Like, how does that even take place? Where does it start? Where does it end? Great negotiating by whoever ended up with thirty-seven and a half. That's a new standard. That is. I assume everybody is going to try to get to, but they will not. Yeah. But that is more than Joe Buck and Troy Aikman are making combined a year yep. um, for Monday Night Football, which is also pretty large. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the immediate thought is, oh, yeah, definitely worth it. Because even though it's, 30, yeah, it's 37 and a half million, but that is unbelievable for Fox Sports to get. Yes. I can't wait to watch and listen to Tom Brady week five call games after they start two and two. Oh, down at oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Hey, can we start that 10 year thing now? What do you say? Uh, we yeah. still get to 37 and a half million, even though I missed the first four. I did have two of the games on Fox, though, so I kind of did my job a little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you think? Can we uh, maybe start that whole thing? How do you not think about that? Mm -hmm. This is definitely just victory parade. This is a victory lap, then. Has to be. Yeah. Well, and I don't know. I mean, I think they still have to split it up and everything, but isn't there a good chance now that, like, Fox is going to get more Super Bowls than every other network for the next like during his contract like well, people are going to want to hear brady fucking call the super bowl yeah so abc hasn't had it right abc hasn't had it in a bit because they haven't so. had a crew right so like i think fox is most worried about not having a good enough crew that would warrant being in the super bowl rotation now will they catch like the beginning of the rotation so they get more at bats almost quicker i have no idea how that whole thing works but i do know that every network is like super worried that their crew is not good enough that whenever it is presented for a Super Bowl, there's no way they get into the rotation. So I don't know if there is a rotation naturally that Fox thought maybe if we don't fucking go make a big swing at this thing, we'll, we'll fall out of. But yes, everybody on earth wants to hear Thomas Edward Patrick Brady the Jr. fucking call a Super Bowl. Yeah. According to the internet, uh, until 2034, that it's already determined which Networks uh, do have the Super Bowls. It goes Fox, mm. CBS, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC, ABC, CBS, Fox, NBC. Yeah, there's a little rotation. Yep. yep. And out of nowhere, now NBC has the worst crew. I guess not this year, but going forward, NBC has dropped to the bottom of those four. I mean, NBC is in an interesting situation all of a sudden. Yeah. They put out a list of all the, all the uh, Romo, Brady, Collinsworth, Aikman, Herbstreet. All guys that are pretty good on TV. Can't wait to see how it plays out. Hour two with AJ Hawk on the other side of this six minute break. Did, did not get six minute break in. Completely forgot that was happening as we were diving into that whole news. This is huge news. Yeah. Huge yeah. for the NFL as a whole. Mm -hmm. This changes the game. Tony Romo really, you know, changed it. He went up with like $17 million. Everybody's like, holy shit. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Then all of a sudden, Joe Buck, Troy Aikman get damn near the same thing. It's like, all right, here, this is the new thing. We don't know what Herb Street signed for, right? Or Al Michaels. I don't think it, there's just reports. Nothing's yeah. been confirmed. Right. Confirmed, yeah. no. 
there was a lot of reports about us mm -hmm. and me that were going around that were never confirmed by either party involved. One of the parties was directly me. So uh -huh. like, it is interesting what is reported and what is real, what is actual, what's used, what's being used as leverage, what is not being used as leverage, you know, all that type of stuff. So, I mean, good for fucking Tom, dude. I am so happy for him. Yeah. Jesus. I mean, that's you got to think what Peyton's thinking right now. Yeah, true. Yeah, so like, I wonder what Peyton's thinking. Especially if he doesn't get, if they don't get the Broncos, because that's kind of his current goal, right? I don't I think guess, he's, at least. I, I think that those reports, I'm not 100% sure, but I don't think they're accurate. Oh, he's not in one of the groups? I don't think he's in, I don't think he's in any of the groups. I'm not 100% uh -huh. sure. I do not think he is in any of the groups. He might be. I don't know. I don't know what all I'm allowed to say, what is all out there. Well, and I guess you don't know, but like in terms of just like ad, like Peyton's got his booze company. Like he's probably enjoying himself, what he's doing right now. Omaha Productions, killing it. He has that game show that he started. He has all the Peyton's places, the Eli's places. I think Serena has mm -hmm. one. Uh -huh. He has all Not these things that he's just created. Like, you know, Gatorade or Papa J like whatever, you know, he's doing on that end of the spectrum. Like well, I, I, he sold all of his Papa John's. Right, mm -hmm. exactly. Smart. But all the, whatever, you know, other stuff he has out there. Like, Interesting. And he signed for two more years for the Manning cast, right? Isn't that through 2023 or 2024? So. Yeah, I think so. So, but that's like a production deal with ESPN. Like that's why when I saw him create all the like the game show and this show and that show and that show, I'm this is not information from him. This is just watching along, like trying to create stuff that he doesn't have to do that somebody else could do that he can just kind of you know create and continue to create. Right. It felt like he was trying to do that. Then when the whiskey game came in, it was like yeah. okay, he's just trying to get in any business that he enjoyed. I think I think yeah. anything he enjoys, he's trying to get into business and learn about the whiskey biz. I think he's doing pretty well. I think yeah. he's doing really well. I don't know if there's anything that Peyton's got into that hasn't done. Yeah, yeah. multiple revenue streams. That's what he does. Yeah, and he's got a bunch of them that I think have all been successful. So I don't know why he would, was. I wonder if he was approached with similar numbers as this. Hmm. When. Oh. Well, the last we heard was well when ESPN was still talking about Monday Night Football. Was that ever you know legitimate? You think they so, said twenty million plus? So this is going to go even deeper into all this thing. Doesn't Disney own Fox now? I believe so. They own parts of. They bought parts of like their film division. I don't think they, they don't own Fox like a network. Not Fox right? Sports. No. So Disney has no investment in no the, ABC, Fox Sports. but not Fox. Yeah, yeah, I know ESPN and ABC are the same, obviously. But I thought Disney bought Fox. Like, I thought that happened. Yeah, it must have just been, I think it was, like, the film library. I don't know if they own Fox Sports. Oh, okay. Hmm. Because that was the Simpsons thing that, you know, right. was also a prediction that Disney bought Fox. Because I was about to say, if Disney's just paying the checks for both of these, that is a wild thing. But apparently that is not the case. So let's go to the Five Energy phone line. Let's go to Marshall in Illinois. What's going on, Marshall? What do you want to talk about, pal? Oh, you might be right, Pat. So the 2023 Super Bowl will be in uh, Phoenix this next year, which is always the same week as the famed Waste Management Phoenix Open and their electric 16th stadium hole. So the question is, if the Pat McAfee Show will be making its way out to Radio Row, will you be joining your friend Aaron Rodgers in the Pro-Am to play in front of 30,000 people with your revitalized and... Actually, very nice-looking golf swing, if I must say. Marshall! Wow. I needed Marshall. that. Thank you, Marshall. It's a good call. Positive affirmation. I'm starting to learn how to putt, too. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Get putting oh. practice in now. Mm -hmm. Some drills. Thank you, Marshall in Illinois. I have no idea. I was not invited, I do not believe. I think that's an invited thing. If I was invited, would I play? I think so. Seems like it's a pretty electrifying place to play. Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. I would do it. It is fantastic that Phoenix is hosting all that. And also, you add in the fact that, like, I... I am a massive fan of the city of Phoenix. Mm -hmm. yeah. I feel like I know it pretty well now from traveling there a lot. Uh, I'm very excited for next Super Bowl week. But, yeah, I don't think we're able to do anything there because I believe they're a uh, DraftKings operation. They are, uh -huh. yeah. I believe they have a deal with DraftKings mm -hmm. and we're FanDuel, so I guess beef. Yes. Yeah, Sorry. Seriously. Bug windshield situation at the moment, but, yeah. <laughs> Go Suns. For sure. Uh, the, um, but, yeah, we will, we will try to get out there and have a good time. I mean, that is – Hopefully business is bigger than all of us, uh, the, bigger than any of that conversation. But I'd like to see that place, yeah, that Phoenix Open thing. And if we're going to be out there the same week of it, it's like have to see it, I think. Yeah. That is so electrifying, mm -hmm. so damn electrifying mm -hmm. for golf. That's how every golf should be. Yeah. Yes. That's how every golf should be. Those I'm clips going. were going, too. It was freaking Super Bowl week, Super Bowl weekend, and all, a lot of the times you would yeah, open got, up Twitter. Well, and, we're learning a Super Bowl week real slow, right? Yeah. Because yeah. everybody's just uh, kind of – you know, passing shit, mm -hmm. you know, just like trying to sell shit. Nobody's really breaking anything, Super Bowl week. Yeah, and then you got hole-in-ones and everyone's chucking beers under the course. Mm -hmm. It's like, this never happens. Well, this is unreal. Why are we a radio row right now? Yeah. 
next week, next year being in the same place will be awesome. We'll be fantastic. We'll try to enjoy it and do uh, something pretty big. Not as big as what Tom Brady's got going on. Oh. All right, hour two starts in like 35 seconds with old AJ Hawk joining us from an attic in Ohio. Uh, can't wait to see you then. Let's do it. Right about... The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee you Show you? starts in three, three two, two, one. Hey, welcome back to that show. Hour two of this Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, with Disney paying a lot of money. <laughs> Begins now. Yeah. yeah. So after some research from the back room, we have learned that Disney does own Fox Sports. Okay. So Disney is paying Joe Buck and Troy Aikman $36 million a year, and they're paying Tom Brady $37.5 million a year to call football games right now. Now, there's obviously a conversation to be had about what will the new bar be, who will be setting the bar next, what it will Peyton, it will Peyton see this and potentially get in there. It's all good for the game to continue to grow the game, but the fact that Disney owns all parties is... Very interesting to me. Yeah. Genius also. I guess. I mean, now they get what? Two Super Bowls then? If we're talking about the four sure. networks, they have two. Two. And in the rotation, every single one. Yeah. Yeah. CBS and NBC are battling against Disney in this entire thing. Old Walt's family is just taking yeah. money. Yeah. However, they $71.3 billion uh, buy Jesus. of Fox. $71.3 billion. Which I guess if you look at Twitter, at $46 billion. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is uh, the going rate for these things. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> what a wild time to be alive. We're excited to be here. The talks tables here at Ty Schmidt, at Boston. Austin Connor. Tone Diggs, one half of the hammer. Dan Cowboys is sitting there looking, you know, absolutely radiant thank today, you. Tone. Thank you. Thank you. I you, appreciate that. It makes uh, me feel good. How about the weather being much nicer today? It's oh. beautiful. I mean, you get out there, you get a little stuff done in the yard, you you know, you go smoke a cigar on the porch while you're watching the pens fucking destroy Igor. It's great. Thing. Yeah, it's great. Igor is dead, this guy. We, yeah. got, a, we got a goalie named uh, Louis Domingue that we didn't even know Domingue? existed. Well, you know what I'm saying. This guy went from pauper peasant to King Deming in a matter yeah. of a few days in Pittsburgh. This guy is a stud, and it is hockey season. But speaking of smoking cigars around the house, this guy does it every day. He tries to burn his house down on a regular basis. Ladies and gentlemen, college football national champion, Super Bowl champion, Ryder Cup champion, COVID survivor, A.J. Hawk. Yeah. A.J., Tom Brady's making $37.5 million a year for 10 years straight to call football games for Fox. How fucking awesome is this for the NFL, A.J. Hawk? I mean, credit to Fox, credit to Tom, everything. This is unbelievable. And also, going back to, I know you guys were talking about Peyton Manning. If Peyton was offered anything near 10 years, $375 million, he turned it down. Credit to that dude, because even if I, <laughs> even if I didn't want to do the job, I, how do you say no to this? Like this is this is amazing. I think, and the cool thing is too. Like Tom has never have has Tom even done like a practice game? Have we ever seen him do anything? And I think we all believe like he's going to be awesome. We saw him on the Manning cast, right? He was yeah. actually watching film during the Manning cast and pointing out a couple of things, told a story. I think he's going to be amazing. I assume he's going to be amazing. Every time he does one of those super TED talks or whatever, he seems to be well spoken. He's great. At the game of football. Yeah. And he's been there, done that with literally every single situation. I think the reason why Tony Romo became a, uh, you know, a, uh, a fan favorite so quickly is because his knowledge of the game and his excitement of the game, but him predicting plays was almost like the thing. Tom Brady literally does that every single game still, trying to predict exactly what the next people are going to do. He'll have that facet of the game. His resume is insane, and he seems like a pretty chill guy. I... I Sounds like a home run, and that's exactly what Fox thought as well. My interesting thought of this, and this is why I brought up Disney earlier, so my assumption of how this goes, if you're bought by a parent company or run by a parent company, 
when you have to make an investment that large, you have to go ask for that money from parent company to make payment to get okay. So like, for instance, we've had to have a couple of those discussions where we're talking to somebody who then has to go talk to somebody. So it's like, not only are you negotiating with these people, but these people are negotiating with these people to try to, so it's a full process. And you have to like coach them up on what they should also potentially add in there. So both ESPN and Fox have to go to parent company Disney to get these types of checks, I would assume. Not 100% sure, but I would assume. It's hilarious thinking what they turned down at ESPN. And then when Fox came in with a $375 million deal, they're like, apps a fuck. Tom Brady, <laughs> run it, mm -hmm. fucking run it. Uh, can't do it. So sorry. Can't have that happen. That's interesting, right? I wonder, like, the, the rippling effects that this is going to have, the announcement of this deal, the way deals are going to be done, how talent and players and people that are on TV are probably going to expect some things. It's a, this is a massive ordeal. And in the end, everybody wins because Tom's going to be fucking great at it. And we're going to learn more about football than we ever have in the past. It's going to be a Manning cast live every single week with Telestrator opportunities. This is fantastic. You, you know the thing, too, his play-by-play -play guy is going to be Kevin Burkhart, who I think is awesome and I think will work very well with Tom. Like, I think it's a perfect guy for him. But who is going to who's going to fill that role while Tom is continuing to play? So there was the rumors that they were going to trade Drew Brees from NBC to Fox. Not and, now. But who knows no how— no reason now, though. But how long is Tom going to play? I mean, if he even if he plays two more years, would it make sense to trade for Drew Brees now? When's Fox's next Super Bowl? I just had it up. Shit. To, next? Yeah, let me. I'll find it. This year was NBC. Was last year Buck and Troy? Yes. Yeah, so they probably have two more years because it's ESPN and then it's ABC. So we do have a finish line here for Tom Brady all of a sudden, right? Because, yeah. they're, they're, hey, the year that we have the Super Bowl, you have to be back. It's the only reason why we're still in rotation because we're saying you're our guy. Go ahead, Tone. So they have it this upcoming season, which she's not going to do, and then it's CBS, and then it's Fox. Fox has this upcoming season? Yeah. And then CBS oh, and then oh. Fox and it gets in. What if it gets knocked out so and they might, the Super Bowl? Hey, they might trade for Drew. Yeah, how about what if it is like if Tom isn't in this? Tom's going to be in the Super Bowl regardless. Yeah. He's either playing it or he's calling the fucking <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> for real, that'd be awesome. Why that, not? That would be incredible. I wonder how that would work. Well, if they still have it in two years, if it goes Fox, CBS, Fox, and he's still. Mm -hmm. So maybe they window. still sign Drew Brees because they have the fucking Super Bowl and they're probably going to need to do something like that. Well, I also like, I feel like Greg Olson would be a pretty good placeholder like he's still pretty damn good at the job yeah but why didn't they just why was there rumors that they were going to get your breeze with greg olson in a job if they were ever going to you know Promote, you think yeah. about they don't these. know if they were going to get tom that's why yeah but they weren't expecting to have tom this year right yeah ever right no there's no way they knew he was going to play at least one more did year. sean payton sign with fox too St yeah, studio. Studio. That's a studio, studio guy. So both retired guys that were going to maybe allegedly go own the dolphins are now at fox <laughs> yeah Good play. Fox also, also said Tom's like an ambassador too, right? To mm -hmm. the league or whatever. They're going to give him some other kind of titles. Yeah, he's big international, right? Tom's huge oh, internationally. Yeah. They probably so have go, him. Yeah, that's good. Shake hands, kiss babies. Like, that's a great gig, man. I'll take it. Probably to get in, right? Because game's in Germany. Who knows where mm -hmm. else to put the games We're just at. Entertaining. You're showing up to like big – obviously, they wouldn't make Tom do many of them. But if Tom shows up to some sponsor event, if it's Rolex or some crazy deal – it adds a lot of value, obviously. Yeah, this is good business. Martin. And Connor said this immediately upon the um, number being announced. Nobody is thinking like, oh, they overpaid for Tom Brady, by the way. They're all thinking, like I'm thinking, huge number. Holy mm -hmm. fuck, that's a big, that's an awesome number. It's a glorious number. It's a great number that that happened. But nobody's like, yeah, not worth it. Tom Brady's not worth it. You know, like that's the type of decisions that I like seeing be made, especially for the NFL. Like the NFL is a cash cow. All these networks know it. They're the only things that consistently bring ratings and only grow their ratings every single year. Everybody else is dying. This is where billions and billions and billions of dollars have been made in your past and you're forecasting in your future. Like they might save some of these networks. The NFL might. Why not invest in, in the entire product so you can continue to blossom? It feels like this is a great move for Fox Sports going forward.
I, I think it's I would I would like to know how long they've been working on it. I'm sure there probably will be a big write up about how this started, right? Oh, F one. It was not F one. We F1, talked about yeah. it. We <laughs> talked about it in F one. Pretty quick. They hammered that out pretty quick, didn't yeah. they? Yeah, well one came from the uh, Aston Martin store, yep. one came from the Rolex store. They met in the middle, Lewis Hamilton. It was right before that photo was taken. That's right, exactly. And actually, uh Shanks from Fox was there. He said, Hey, you, know, you guys do a bunch of goats here, you know, this is awesome. Hey Tom, how we get you in our booth? You know, how we get you in our booth? Tom looks at Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's like money, money, everything, money. <laughs> yeah, Michael Jordan's like yeah. money, and then David Beckham was like lots of money, lots, lots <laughs> yeah. of money, and then Lewis Hamilton was like thirty-six million maybe, and then Tom's like thirty-seven and a half million dollars, and Shanks like cool, can I get a selfie? Like he might might be him in the back right, <laughs> right there, there. Yeah. Yeah. might be him in the back, you know? Cool, let's go ahead and do it. Who knows how this came together? Where did the number start? Where did yeah. it start? Is the big it question started above. It started above whatever the highest paid guy is now. I'm sure. Right? For sure, like twenty. Did it start at twenty million, which is what allegedly Sean McVay was being uh, offered by Amazon? We don't know if that's real or not. We don't know if that was being put out as leverage for Sean McVay to get a new head coaching contract. We're just saying what was being reported. Is that where they started? And then they got to thirty-seven and a half because I would like to talk to the negotiator. That is a fucking good move. That's a great move. It's like, hey, I'm not going to tell you what the market says that you should pay us. I'm not going to tell you what we think exact will be worth. I'm just telling you what it's going to take to get Tom to do this every single fucking week for you guys after he retires. This is the number it's going to take. There's not really much budget here. Like, this is how it's going to go. And you're either in or you're out. And you're like, well, fuck, we're in, I guess, if that's going to get us Tom Brady. And Tom's going to be yeah. fucking pumped about this. It's great PR for Fox, though. I, I, know, I know I cut you off, but think about it now. Yeah, of course, he's not going to take the gig for at least one, two, who, who knows how many years, but... Fox still knows it gives them a g bunch of great pub. They're going to promote it. Tom will do things for Fox. I would imagine why he's still playing. Like he'll do little remotes or whatever he may, a little bit more media stuff. So it's huge because you don't want to lose him to another network and then they get all this hype. Forget another network. What if he just wanted to go make his own clothing line and yeah. like do all yeah. this other stuff? Like, he already is. I, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. But what if you want to go full invest in all that stuff? Like I think it's good that for not he only. He can still do everything. He can still do everything in call games. That's the best part. Exactly. But I also think it's good for the game that he's going to stick around the game. I'm happy the Fox is keeping him around the game. Like very thankful for that. But for him, I think it's good too because when your entire life is one thing, pa 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 pa, this is what you do, this is what you do, this is what you do. This time of year, this is what's happening. This time of year, this is what's happening. Fall, this is what's happening. First week, like it can be tough on guys transitioning out of the NFL who have played for a long time. Like I understand the young guys that get cut, it's hard because they didn't make a lot of money and life kind of told them they weren't good enough at being football. But for older guys who have become robots and their entire life has been just this same exact schedule pretty much for like 30 years straight and then automatically stops and it's just like no more and you're not around any of your people you're not around the game people get jaded people go into bad places even though they're rich it's like not great for a lot of this keeps Tom in a football schedule, football routine, still plugged into the game, still can break down film while having much less of a travel and work schedule that he would have to have to remain at the top of his game. I think it's great for us as fans. I think it's great for Tom as transitioning out of retirement. We already saw him for six weeks, right? We already saw him for six oh, weeks. Yeah. It wasn't great. And also, it's just, this is fucking awesome. I'm very pumped about today, AJ. I think, too, for Tom, like, yeah, I... I think I saw a thing where his dad said years ago, he's like, I'm worried about Tom. Whenever he's done, like, he is so into football. I'm worried about what he could, like, put his passion into. And you, I, I'm sure you would agree. It's a lot easier to have, like, to do fun things or say you take a little vacation or you have a little time in the offseason when you know you have something out there. Like, you know you have a date. Like, in football, you know, okay, OTAs start here, camp starts here. So you can have this fun and whatever you have this goal you're still working towards. I think Tom still kind of has that now with this schedule. And it keeps with the football schedule, too. It kind of stays in rhythm. Joining us now is a man who might have more information on how this all played out behind the scenes. But what a massive splash by Fox. Congrats to them. And congrats to this guy, made being sober for the first time since wow. the draft. Oh, okay. Uh, joining us, uh, senior NFL insider at the NFL Network and the league itself, NFL.com. Host of the weekly wrap-up with Rap Sheet and Friends. Us being friends, he being Rap Sheet. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Yeah. Yeah. What's up, dude? You look sober. Cool, thanks. 
I am sober, thank you very much. Just working a little bit. On my, well, I guess you're working too. But anyway, I am sober, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. We work when you're at Harry Potter museums. Mm -hmm. yeah, we work when you're at Pez dispensers. Wow. As do you, by the way, yeah. though. You called us from both those places. We appreciate it. We're lucky to chat with you every single day. Let's dive right into it. $375 million, <laughs> 10 years for Tom Brady to call games for Fox. We are incredibly pumped for him, for the game of football, for everybody, for all things in involved. How did this come about? And did you guys have uh, any like info that this was potentially going to happen? This is big news out of the Fox Sports world. It's big news for actually a bunch of different reasons. You know, the the market for broadcasters has reached a place I never I never saw this coming. I mean, I you know the the value of guy like who actually is calling the game, and obviously Tony Romo kind of started it. I think all the other guys looked around like, well, why can't I make this? Why can't I make this? And they all kind of jumped in Tony Romo's territory. Um, Brady's at, this is at another level. I mean, this is literally at another level. And, you know, I think for Tom Brady to one, well, I mean, God, there's so many things. One is like, he's not making a ton from the Bucks this year, right? Um, so maybe this helps sort of supplement that. Maybe this is part of the reason why he came back because he knows he's getting that sweet, sweet Fox money whenever he's done. So it's all kind of worth it for him. Um, you know, there's the fact that he's not going to be involved in ownership. Like I know there was all those talk about the Miami Dolphins and, and, you know, him joining the owners. This is obviously not that this is way, way different. Um, and then there's Fox saying, you know what, whenever you come, whenever you come on, we'll, we'll be happy to have you just in a non ending deal. I mean, there's so much unprecedented here. Ian, do you know what Fox is going to do with that crew until Tom does get there? I know some of the discussions uh, revolve around Greg Olson, uh, who... Let's go! Greg. Greg. Hey, Great dude. Uh, I asked him about it during the uh, owner's meeting. He politely declined comment. They have not yet made it official, I assume, because they're waiting on this. Um, you know, there is the thought that he would join Kevin Burkhart, um and kind of hold the place for Tom Brady, which would be insulting on so many levels, except that it's Tom Br I don't want to speak for Greg, but like, except that it's Tom Brady. It's a great so platform for Greg, though. It's great. They get the Super Bowl this year. Greg gets well, to get good reps, too. That's exactly right. But here's my thing. So let's say Brady's team makes the playoffs, probably. Let's say they lose in the first round or second round. It's not your not. thing. <laughs> it's not your thing. It's not just your thing. We had this conversation. You had, did I miss this? I was not tuned in. I was, was doing so. You had this. You had. We wondered about whether or not he'll actually be in the booth. Yeah, yeah. On Super Bowl, like Tom's gonna be in the Super Bowl one way or the other. He's either playing it or he's calling it. That's what we did. Is that what you're thinking? Is that your thing? Yeah. That's and no. And I reached out to a Fox spokesman who declined comment. Uh, some real journalism there. Um, <laughs> Is that really your thing? You did reach out and ask that question. I, I was wondering. I really did. And they won't say. So like, we are Definitely gonna now speculate it. all season. No, we won't. We won't speculate. It's not that big of a deal. What about his bye week? Maybe he does a game. No, I don't. Hey, bye week, though. Hey, he's studying. That's a good thought, too. He's changing the whole offense. Remember, that's what the, the, he's literally changing the entire offense on the bye week. Because I think Matt Hasselbeck did this when he was playing with us. When he's playing with the Colts. Yeah. He I went and that. called, like, two games on, like, a false booth almost in the stadium for Fox, I think, for the future. I think uh, Greg Olson. Greg did this, too. Greg, yeah. Greg did a real game, actually, during the season. Greg did this. Wow, he's, was he on IR or was he out for No, that week? bye week. That's crazy. Bye week and then IR the next year. Yeah, that's right. So then maybe right. Tom will do that. I, I just assume Tom Brady's like Tom Brady, so he's not going to do anything like anybody has done in the past. But I would assume Tom would like some reps too, don't you think? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe not. It's also amazing, you know, how everything leaks in this world and like media agents are way worse than playing agents because they, everybody, At everyone business leaks everything. Or, oh. This didn't come out at all. Like, it came out in the earnings call. It's crazy. So is Tom – who does Tom's business? Somebody that handles Tom's business that is with other people, or are they only on Team Tom? Um, if – I don't know who specifically did this one, but Don Yee does his football. Uh, Dubin does his marketing off the field. I assume did this deal as well. Um, 
but I'm not sure who specifically negotiated. But right, they're only basically only with Tom Brady and Jimmy G and a couple others. So that's why. So that's why. Yeah, yeah, that's why they can keep it hush hush. That's awesome. All right, I, I like it even more. Mm-hmm. I like it even more because that means Fox didn't have any leaks either, right? Yeah. Nope. I guess you would uh, you would this say is no. terrible. We like leaks. No, no, you <laughs> like leaks. We appreciate them because we get to report them. But I like whenever people, you know, say not everybody needs to know everything all the time. You know, I like that a lot. I enjoy that a lot. Uh, let's move around the NFL a little bit. Jarvis Landry, allegedly the Baltimore Ravens are interested. I assume a lot of teams are interested in Jarvis Landry. Am I wrong in reading this? Why am I reading this wrong? And why is he not a Colt? <laughs> Welcome to the Colts, Jarvis Landry. Um, <laughs> You're, you're not wrong, and I think a lot of people are interested. As always, money is the issue. And if you look historically at this time of year, the amount of players who've got, let's say, more than $10 million, you can count them on one hand. Like, it's like Clowney did one year, that was one, but there's like almost no players get more than, like, say, $10 million, which you know, like, had Jarvis Landry, remember he visited the, the Falcons? We all thought that Deshaun Watson was going to go there. Like, that probably would have been about a $10 million deal. I don't know where he gets that now. And, you know, I know the Browns offered him a pretty nice one-year deal where it would have been a pay cut, but he would have gone back there for a nice sum, turned that down. And now it's like, say, I would say the same thing for, um, you know, same thing for anyone who gets who gets released this time of year. Like, it is not a lot of money out there. Teams have mostly spent. Got to go to the booth. Go ahead, Ty. Yeah. Rap sheet, speaking of that, do you get the inclination that the Packers are going to be involved with any of these guys, or are they one of those teams where they're not really going to be able to give a guy $10 million, so they're probably not going to get one of these uh, receivers? I think the Packers are going to be involved Ooh. in this market, and this is actually a great market for them because let's say you're Jarvis Landry or maybe even better for the Packers, let's say you're Julio Jones, and you're not going to get $15 million. You're probably not going to get $10 million. The Packers would be one of those teams you'd want to join where maybe you make $3 million with some incentives, but you know you got a chance to make the Super Bowl. Like, that actually is attractive. So, you know, we got Odell, uh, who obviously had interest from the Packers last time. You had Julio, who I imagine will get some interest from there. Uh, Landry, who I don't know has gotten interest from the Packers, but all those guys would make sense for Green Bay, who I would say might add another receiver at some point. Wow. Julio would look great as a Colt, too. He's wow. fine. I don't want this just to be a Packers Colts conversation, but like Matt Ryan's here. He's a Navy SEAL. He's an astronaut. Jim Irsay's going to the moon and to Mars. I mean, let's let's go ahead and win a Super Bowl, Ian Rappaport. Is there any rumblings of anything happening around that? You got a suit and tie. You got a tie on, so it feels like there's a little bit of cooking. What's cooking right now? Nothing. Uh, not a lot. I mean, Bradbury might sign somewhere. Oh, uh, oh well, quick. Quick turn around there. Yeah. I mean, so. If you look at the way that situation played out, like the Giants, I know it seems like the Giants didn't have a lot of offers. They actually had a lot of offers. They had several teams make, you know, legitimate workable trade offers for them, but that new team couldn't then come to terms with Bradbury on a new deal because he's he wanted that, you know, ten million, twelve million. He wanted more. Now that he's free, I would imagine you think his a- agents are not allowed to talk to teams about contracts while they're still employed, so they would definitely not do that. But you'd think his agents would know what market, it, you know, what's out there. So if he's got it, like if he's going to make what he turned down from in those trade offers, like I could see it happening pretty quickly. Okay. All right, Bradbury. Mm-hmm. Welcome to the Colts. Go ahead, AJ. Ian, what about uh, Deshaun Watson and the Browns? What, uh, he's, is he being deposed later this week? And what? Like, yeah. Is he going to be there week yeah. one? What's that mean? Another one? Criminal? No, not not criminal. All, these are all the civil all the civil lawsuits that are still being kind of still playing out and there's some depositions this week then there's some in a couple weeks and you know the way it's looking now you're not going to have a trial until probably after the season which sounds like a really big deal but we don't actually know if it is because we don't know if he's going to settle because if you look back at you know last early it was either early november or late october around the trade deadline you know, it seemed at one point that he was going to settle to facilitate only to facilitate a trade with the Dolphins. So if he was willing to do that, then might he be willing to do that now? And might his new team say, we know that you didn't do it. We trust you because obviously they've come out and said they did all the investigative, whatever they have said publicly. You know, there is a chance he settles now if he was close to settling before. And 
maybe if he gets a suspension, it would come before this season. I'm not sure anybody wants it to drag on until next year either, honestly. Roger Goodell just said they're going to be investigating indefinitely until all the pieces of information come out. They're just waiting to see what other people, what ends up happening in other, like the civil suit and everything like that? Yeah, I think they're, they don't have to wait until the civil suit is done. Like there's precedent where they can do it, you know, issue punishment beforehand, but they do not want to get in a situation like they did with Josh Brown, the Giants kicker, where they suspended him and the new information came out like a couple of days later and then he, I think he got cut after that so they didn't have to suspend him more, but it was, you don't want that situation. We would like justice to be served whichever way justice is fairly deserved. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Rap Sheet, the uh, Debo kind of news has kind of fallen off. Are they probably going to get a deal done? And it sounds like DK is going to get one, but the only one that hasn't really been uh, confirmed or not is Terry McLaurin. Is he kind of the only receiver now left that might be on the move? Uh, the problem is there's no deadline now. So, like, for Debo or what's for DK, too, and for McLaurin, like, the draft obviously uh, the draft obviously has come and gone. So any draft picks you're going to trade for would be for next year's draft. You're probably not going to do player for player. That rarely happens. So, like, for Debo, you know, I'm sure that they will try to get to work on a new contract, but he's still not in a great place. So now it's like the question is, does he show up for – Oh, or does show up for mandatory minicamp or does he not? Um, you mentioned DK. I know Seattle would like to get a deal done. The market is really well defined. Like this is a, we know what receivers make now. So theoretically it should be an easy deal to get done. Uh, and I do know the Washington football, the commanders, whatever. Um, I know the whoa. commanders. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, Jesus. I'm sorry. Did I, I didn't give that the proper respect. I do like the name. Do you? Well, you know, it's fine. So you just lied. I, yeah. You just Jeez. lied. Look right. at you. Washington football team. No, I think Washington football team had like a nice kind of like international intrigue ring to it. We yeah. we enjoyed Great. WFT as well. We enjoyed WFT as well. We didn't understand, but I guess you can't, if you have no like, you know, mascot, I guess you can't really. There's a lot of avenues. I mean, mascots are ridiculous anyway. They just walk around oh. the field and do dumb stuff. Like, oh. I just, oh. Listen, oh. I concur. Okay, oh. I concur oh. on most situations, but there are mascots that make the uh, game day experience much better. For instance, Jackson DeVille. Yeah. Uh, yep. That dude bungee jumps from the top of the stadium every single game with the, the kickoff ball in <laughs> his hand. That's insanity. That's good. Especially down in Duval or anything. Blue here is an active part of keeping people alive. They're also a massive revenue stream because they go to events and represent the Colts. Well, that helps. And they yeah. go to things like that. You know what I mean? They're a massive. The Suns Gorilla. How about the Suns Gorilla that jumps Very off a trampoline good. and does flipping dunks and Crunch. stuff? Yeah, Benny the Bull is in there. Yeah. I mean, there's well, a. There's the Patriots a, who shoot guns after the touchdown. Lady, the uh, Minutemen, yeah. 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 The lady yeah. Yeah, like plays on her head on the unicycle. Stealing you know her, Pat. That's uh, Red, uh, Red Panda. I don't think she's mm -hmm. anybody's mascot, though, oh. but she oh, should be. Gotta love Red Panda. It's amazing. I, I was in the SEC them. for five years. They, they were a staple at halftime. It was awesome. Yeah, I tossed Red Panda a bowl. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Yeah. Two bowls. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Alley up to Red Panda. 100%. What a run she had. Oh, yeah. yeah. Bro, she had a streak for like 15 years straight of never dropping a fucking bowl. And now she'll drop a bowl every once in a while. I'm like, get her out of here. I'm like, you have no respect. <laughs> have some respect for Red Panda. Yeah, yeah, she was on a unicycle. Yeah. yeah. Bowls on her head in front of 13,000 people oh. and hitting like literally every single night. I mean, her hit rate was at like 99.9. Oh, yeah. Nine. oh yeah. And then now she'll miss and everybody's like, get her out of here. God, I love it. that the camera just pulled out so we could see her legs doing the unicycle thing. Do you not ride a unicycle? You look like a unicycle guy. Yeah, no, does, uh, definitely not. You know what I was just thinking though? Have you ever bungee jumped? You no. Mentioned, yeah, it is so bad. One of the worst experiences in my whole life. Why? It was so... I was, like, terrified. I don't get scared of anything. I wanted Whoa, to. Damn. Tough guy. Right yeah. there. It was awful. You don't get scared of anything. You're, in your, you're, you're literally down. in your basement all day, every day. Did you do it on spring break off a crane or something? I did it in uh, Switzerland off a gondola, and I oh, thought my feet were going to come out. Oh, which no. would have been bad. That's would've, awesome, yeah. though, right? Over, on the gondola over the Alps? Pretty sweet. Uh, it was over, like, a big lake or whatever. No, it wasn't awesome. It was no, awful. Water, I thought dude. I would never, like, start breathing again. And Why'd you also, do it? What's that? Why did you do it then? Yeah, I would I would I, like to do it. I would imagine I'd be very scared. Not fucking scared of anything. Well, that's the purpose. I thought it would be some great, like, rush and thrill. The other thing was, they don't tell you you're supposed to dive out like a, like you're in a swimming pool. So I just jumped out. 
So you go all the way down and then just. Whoosh. Oh, you got oh, whiplash. Oh, Jesus. Oh, oh man. You, got you, you, can't, you can't pencil in when you're strapped to the ankle. Bro, why would you <laughs> ever think that you should go I, I, opposite I no end of where you're attached? <laughs> oh, my. Nobody explain this to me. That had to be. Yeah. Like, like you didn't break your neck. Yeah, snap in half. As you were jumping, they were probably like, no, 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 no. Ah, uh, fucking, he's dead. Too late. Uh, absolutely done. You're supposed to be scared, though. That's the purpose of it. You're like, what, 130 pounds, too? The rope is never going to break. That's what everybody fears, right? Is the rope's going to break. I mean, I thought I, my feet were in boots. I thought the boots would just slip out, and I'd just be like, I'd be one of those things that people kind of write about. You know, like, that's I was a, there when that guy... That's just, why you went feet first, right? You thought it would, it would help you not slip <laughs> Did out? you think you were going to pogo stick? Did you think... <laughs> Tell me, please tell me, Rap Sheet. You thought you were going to jump down and then be able to have a good enough base <laughs> and you were going to come back up with the bungee. Go all the way back up and, and land on his feet. And then do it again. <laughs> Is that what you, you know, were going to do? Because the boots you were. So <laughs> I just. Why does not everybody do this? It's a big bogo stick. Is that what you were thinking? I just wish that I had thought. I know, like, rarely does this happen. I had no thoughts in my brain. I acted and I just was like. Why in the world would I do that? But here we are. I'm still alive, though, which is great. Hey, check it off the bucket list. I've uh, I've done skydiving before, so oh, yeah. I think bungee jump has to happen at some yeah. point. But I'm heavy. You know, I'm heavy. I, that's a scary thing whenever you got weight. Make sure you dive. Head first. Listen, I'm going to let you know there was no fucking chance I wasn't dying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you might be the only human that thought you could pencil your way through that entire thing. <laughs> what a... Hey... We just learned a lot about it. He would yeah. jump off, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a big deal. Hey, that's a big mental thing that not a lot of people could do. Like AJ said, you get up there, you're scared. To, you're supposed to be scared to death. It's whether or not you can, you know, kind of break through that mental toughness a little bit, AJ. One time. Yeah, it's all I'll, you I'll probably, Skydiving, I would do. I feel That feels more my speed. See, I did that one time. Never doing that again. No. <laughs> I thought I was getting my groin sawed off by that strap <laughs> that is oh. attached to the oh, thing. Yeah, I I, it was one of the most uncomfortable. And then... The minute drop or whatever that you like fall for, awesome. That's awesome. Like Earth is getting real close right now. Holy shit, this is cool. You're flying. And then as soon as they pull the parachute and you're just kind of, it's kind of boring mm -hmm. when they're just kind of bouncing around and my groin's just getting sawed. You know what I mean? So it was like, can we get down? Yeah. Well, we got to wait for the other people that jump to land. <laughs> so you're like just kind of bouncing around. That's a little boring. That's what I say. So I'll never do that again. Also, once again, I'm heavy. So the weight limits on those things. Yeah, yeah. It isn't until like about to pull the parachute that like you, I thought I was going to go right through the straps because I'm 240 or whatever, supposed to be 230. And then instead it just ripped my groin to pieces. So, oh, I mean, it was a good time. Go ahead, Connor. Uh, Rab, she, I just asked him about that. Oh, the, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> Tone, go ahead, bro. Ian, you gave us a little teaser, but I crave sustenance, my friend. Uh, who tried trading for Bradbury and where is he going to go? Um... I would say the team's interested. Okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, are sort of. I know people have been talking about the Eagles could use a corner. I, I would imagine they'd have some interest. I don't think the Raiders will be interested. I know people are talking like Pat Graham, his defense coordinator, was there. Like Raiders, I don't think so. I know the Chiefs had, you know, a couple discussions. I think they would be a team to watch. Jeez. Um, one of the the reason teams want to do this though the before now. the draft is there were some teams that were interested. Who I'm sorry, will remain nameless. Who drafted corners? Okay. So like, if you're two in the top five, corner, right? Yeah. There's two in the top five, right? I mean, that's a big there, deal. There were definitely two in the top five, and I would imagine, you know, both those probably would have been, had some interest in Bradbury. Um, but you take a that. corner, and you're probably not going to trade for someone, and then pay him. $8 million, or you're probably not going to sign someone either at that rate. So the Chiefs and Tyron Matthew continue to confuse me then, because if it, it it's not about the money, obviously, if they're going to trade for another guy and pay another guy in the back end and the secondary, they they brought in a safety read from Houston right. and paid him like 30 some million dollars, which is more, I think, than what Tyron Matthew ended up getting paid for the Saints. That whole situation still be fuddling to everybody. Does Tyron Matthew know why it ended or how it ended, or what are your thoughts on that? I don't think he knows, and he's probably never going to know, but I think it came down to this. So the Chiefs as an organization are they're really good. They try to do things the right way. No one's perfect, but like they really handle things, I think, in the proper way. Based on their value with Tyron Matthew, like clearly they wanted to go younger at that position. They signed Justin Reed. That makes sense. Um, I'm not sure, you know, if they were going to make a deal for him, I think they would have offered him less than they paid him last year. That's insulting. 
this is not a everybody loves Tyron Matthew. They did not want to insult him. So instead oh. of making some BS lowball offer, it was more like, you know what? We are going to agree to disagree on your value. No crime here. We just we are going to give someone more money who's younger and rather than offer you less, we're just going to say clean break, not going to make an offer, which definitely sucks and I feel I'm sure it was not good for him. But it's better than some insulting offer where, like, you ruin the last three years you just had. Yeah, and I think a lot of people are con- more confused by it because it's like, if you can get Tyron Matthew on your team, you fucking get Tyron Matthew on your team. Not that Reed's not a hell of a ball player, but the Honey Badger is the Honey Badger, the landlord, for a goddamn reason. That's why I think a lot of people are confused, as is probably Tyron Matthew. He's got to be happy to be back in Louisiana. Last question from us, and we can't thank you enough for joining us. Gunta Kuntz basically alluded to the fact that who knows where Jordan Love is going to be in the future. Now, <laughs> does he have to say that because he has to keep all doors open for leverage, or what are your thoughts on his exact thing? I think his future is bright. As far as his future with us, We'll kind of see how that goes, Brian Guntekun says on Jordan Love. Is that because he's yeah. in the middle of uh, trading Jordan Love right now, you think, oh. or what's going on? No, and I don't think they – I mean, I, I, I do think they had some interest. I don't think they had any offer that would make it so they had to move on from him. The problem is his value as a backup is, like, real. You know, like, that's a, that is an important thing. So let's say someone would have given him a fifth round. I guarantee somebody would trade a fifth rounder for Jordan Love. I'm sure somebody would trade I a fourth rounder so. for Jordan Love. <sighs> But is that enough for the Packers? God forbid something happens to Aaron Rodgers. Is that enough for the Packers to say, you know what, we'll do this, we'll figure it out later. They want the security of love, who knows their system, who they still like. We don't know if he's going to be what they think he's going to be, but they still like him. So none of those deals would be enough for them to give up on their backup in case Rodgers gets hurt. Now, if someone's willing to give maybe a two, definitely, or a three, maybe, then I think somebody. Then I think they would say, you know what? We'll take the draft pick. We'll sign a veteran backup, and we'll deal with it. It's just the value hasn't come close to meeting what they would do for him. Sure, sounds like that's exact. You just dropped like a. Hey, anybody out there watching? Yeah, it's a two, maybe a three to get Jordan Love right now. Well, is that, is that what you just top of my head? Could be talking about anything. Yeah, Bird. yeah, yeah. You're saying punditry, not insider. You're saying punditry, not insider. You brought the break news? Right. Is what's what's on your phone right there? Somewhere? Uh no, the, the Cardinals just announced some staff changes and some promotions. Whoa. So, oh, who got paid? Uh Sean Jefferson, associate head coach. Spencer Whipple, co pass game coordinator. He was the guy who called plays last year when everybody had COVID. Oh, Whipple. Okay. Is that Whipple's son? Whip. Is that Mark's son? Is that Mark Whipple's son? The uh, former? It is actually, yes. Oh, they uh, wow. Yeah. That's good. Hey, a guy knows football. Yeah. Guy's been growing up. Congrats to them. Congrats to you. Another fantastic episode of the weekly wrap up with Rap Sheet and Friends. Us being friends, you being Rap Sheet. Good luck out there. Are you on TV today? Yeah, obviously. Yeah, I'm going to be on TV in about 22 minutes talking about the big news of Tom Brady making more than many, 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 many people. Hey, make sure you talk about it in a positive light. It's good when people get paid, Ian. I love it. Everybody should get paid, including all of you guys, including me. It's great news for all of us, by the way. He just got thirty-seven and a half million a year. Hundred percent. Yeah, one hundred percent. Ladies and gentlemen, Ian Rappaport. Thank you. All right, let's get to a break. We'll be back on the other side. Uh, Can't wait to answer some more phone calls. Break down some breaking news. He didn't really tell us much here. Brad Brady is going to be on the move here in the next day or so. It sounds like though. Chiefs. Hey, that's interesting. That Tyron Matthew, like, hey, we're not even going to make you an offer because what we're going to offer you, you're going to find disrespectful. And Tyron was like, maybe, I'm gonna, why don't you make an offer? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was going to say, isn't that in of itself disrespectful? We, What we value you, we don't even want to put on paper for you to look at. Okay? What's yeah, that all about? Basically saying, we're ready to move on. That's what they're saying. I thought we had a good relationship. We do. We love you. Yeah. We like you. We love guy. having you around. Good Best. leader. Great on the field. Time. But our particular offer for you, we do not want to put on paper because we we respect you as a human too much. And you'll hate us. I'll get the fuck out of here. Now, with that being said, <laughs> we're signing a guy tomorrow for more money than we paid you last year, <laughs> yeah. the year before that, and whatever you're going to make. See, yeah. we're getting younger. That's the NFL, by the way. That is the NFL to a T. Everybody still loves Andy Reid. Everybody still loves Veach, by the way. Mm-hmm. That whole situation happened. Everybody still loves Tyron Matthew. Hopefully, bygones will be bygones on those two sides. I assume there's no beef. But let's move forward. We're 100 and... 20 days away from NFL football. Let's go! Yes! We're back in four minutes. The Pens are up 3-1 over the New York Rangers. And Paul Bizanet, Biz Nasty, co-host of Spittin' Chicklets, will join us in the third hour to talk all about hockey. Can't wait for that. Can't wait for the rest of this hour. We'll see you in four. You have got...
got to experience so many things, both as a businessman off the field and on the field. Is there a moment when I ask this question, it pops your mind, like, what's the craziest shit you've ever seen in your entire life? Because there was a time there where it felt like you were just getting dropped into insane situations and the world was, like, watching you yeah. do things. Man vs. Wild, you and that Bear Grylls oh, guy, man. fucking electric. That was maybe the most electric shit I've ever seen. Is there anything that you think of whenever you think, like, what's the most ridiculous thing you've been a part of? Uh, probably some of the most ridiculous shit I ever been a part of was, uh, you know, I, I, I had got the uh, uh, the restaurant which I'm in right now, and uh, you know, when we first got it, I, you know, I would come in here and I would, you know, clean up and go outside in the front, sweep up, you know, make sure everything looked nice and shit. And uh, one morning I got up here and I noticed, you know, like, damn, this is a funky ass smell. <laughs> <laughs> and I look, you know what I mean, to the side of my front door and it's a big ass pile of shit. <laughs> and I'm talking about human shit. Yeah, and yeah. it's right on the side of the door. So I'm like, somebody then came and, <laughs> and popped the shit right in front of the door. <laughs> like, oh, this, this shit is crazy. Like, yeah, yeah. I can't be in here serving food. Motherfucker come walk in and they smell <laughs> straight ass cheeks when they come in there like, I don't think that's the restaurant I need to eat in. So, man, I get the water hose and I'm hosing it down and, you know, I see, uh, you know, we got a couple, uh, you know, uh, dolphins that, that usually walk back up in front. Hey, man, did you do this? Like, oh, no. Nah. So, you know, one of them owned up to it. I said, yeah, man, check it out. So, you don't do this no more. Look, you come by here, we get you a, you know what I mean? We get you a broom and, a, uh, you know, you help, you help us, we help you. You feel me? And you know, we put together a little, uh, well, I put a proposition together for him and I ain't cleaning up shit no more. <laughs> it's a win win. It's a win for everybody on that one. Hey, one of your hey, former you know, teammates. Hey. Yeah. Hey, everybody wins. You're helping the people, man. That's awesome. That's why people love you. But hey, one, one of them owned up to it. <laughs> Just a line of questioning. The line of questioning. His name was Willie. Up. Willie. Willie owned up to it. Matter of fact, he just, he just left out. He's saying, Sweeping up, he's like, "Hey, what's up? Oh, boy, I've been looking for you." You feel? Okay. Yeah, we 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 buzz down together up in the front of the, uh, the restaurant, to get it all cleaned up and everything. Hey, you're helping people. Hey, you're help Willie went from shitting outside to working inside. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Let's go, Willie. Let's go. Give it up for my boy Willie, man. <laughs> Joseph Montana, Italian American out of Western Pennsylvania. Yeah. It, was a, it was a it was a kidnapping attempt of his infant grandchild. Yeah. yeah, yeah, in the house. They came into the house, right? Yeah, yeah. And then he was sitting on top of the stairs. <laughs> yeah, he was like, "Put the baby down." And they said no. And he said, "Ah!" And they said, "No, I'm taking your granddaughter." He said, "Ah!" And they said, "I'm taking it." And he goes, "You asked for it." Sketchers up, Sketchers down. Boy, yeah. yeah. Dark. There's no way. Then he yeah. ran down the stairs, yep. and the baby yeah. caught the baby, <laughs> caught the granddaughter after the beak of the lady that was trying to snatch the baby mm -hmm. passed out. It was like one of those, boom, and they like dropped it. And Joe Montana, he actually slid down the stairs at yeah. first. You know, how, like that, how people surf almost down the stairs. He did that and caught his granddaughter like this, and then he picked up the ball and he actually put foot on kidnapping uh, suspect. Mm -hmm. Called the police with his Bluetooth and waited there. Unbelievable. <laughs> That's fucking Joe Montana, dude. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by the best ticket app on planet Earth and... The moon! Did you say it? Yeah, I said it. Cut me off, though. No, you didn't. You didn't say it. No, you didn't. I can't speak at the same time. You guys know that it mutes me. You can. Yeah, you can. You try. Yeah, it you mutes in talk. your ear, but we can hear you. Try. Oh, okay. Just check the tapes. He did not say the it. The moon! There it is. Now it's official. There Just you go. put it back in. That, that, that was pretty, that was pretty, pretty good. good. That was pretty good. Good. Felt like your cadence went at a pretty proper rhythm there. Yeah. Good emphasis mm -hmm. on the O there. That was really good. Thank you. How far is the moon from where we are right now? 250 million miles? No. 208,000. 208,000. 250 million is Mars. No. But See, if, I'm, I'm looking at Mars. Shoot for, the, shoot for Mars. If you miss, you'll hit the moon. That's my, my saying. That's right. You're 100% right. Uh -huh. Now, the question was moon, but I understand what you're saying. You're shooting for that when it comes to goals and aspirations and life and everything like that.
Yes. Well, if there was to be an event on Mars or the moon, mm -hmm. you would want to get your tickets for that from SeaKey. Yeah. Hell yeah. So that's what we've been saying. So not only here on Earth, but whenever it goes to the moon, whenever we get to Mars eventually, which is going to happen, mm -hmm. SeaKey is going to be the spot to get into all the sweet, dope events. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because they have a grading system on oh. their app that lets you know whether or not you're getting a good deal or a bad deal for the entire universe. Oh, pretty cool. So it doesn't matter if it's like sports what? or... What? Or theater, what? or a concert, what? or a show. What? I mean, it could be anything. They have tickets to everything, and they let you know whether or not you're getting fucked. Yeah. And they yeah, never they catfish you, which is awesome. Nope. Mm -hmm. It's planet Earth and space now, maybe. What? Because including Mars. The moon is kind of. I saw there's a government thing going on Mars. this week. Uh, they're going to give information out about the alien situation. Really? What? Some kind of hearing coming. From an alien? Congress is going to have a formal hearing. Is it going to be covered like Johnny Depp and Amber Heard? Will I be able to fucking see this and listen to this? Or is it going to be covered up in C SPAN, right? C SPAN's covering Amber and Johnny. Yeah. yeah. Are they? No. It's a different thing. They're on break till the 16th, by the way. Who? Nick knows. They, they took like a, a 10 day break or something from the trial. I don't know, though. Well, I like the fact that he just tries to bring somebody else down into his shit. Yeah. Reduce the batteries? Of course you know, by the no. way. Yeah, I know they took a break, yeah. Of They're not selling tickets to the court trial, but if they were, we get our tickets from Seeky. Oh, Bingo. Yeah. Bingo. If I could get tickets to this alien thing deal, I'd like to get tickets yeah. through Seeky. Seek. And right now, when you use the link in the bio, uh, I believe you get 10% off your next purchase. Uh, doesn't matter if it's your first time or not. Seeky nice. is the best. Welcome back to the show. What's this alien deal? They're talking about it. They're meeting about it. More evidence. Are we meeting one? Is they just going to prop one out? They're going to roll one's fucking yes. body out in front of this whole thing? Is this happening this week? I'm out. Uh, May 17th, the House uh, Subcommittee on Counterterrorism, Counterintelligence, and Counterproliferation uh, oh, will include testimony. Uh, from two top defense intelligence officials on the aliens. Yes. Oh, shit. So, so you're going to get cross-examined for this? Thing? Who's doing the, the questioning? Uh, that Jim particular Carey. subcommittee. And Johnny Cochran. Do we know any of them? No. Who's on that committee? Yeah. Who's AOC, probably. Alien subcommittee. Andre Carson. AOC, well, she'll want the answers, right? She'll, yeah. go, she'll go hard in that yeah, thing. Yeah, for sure. Andre well, Carson. He's the chairman of the subcommittee. Is Gonzalez on there? Yeah. Anthony Gonzalez? Oh, oh, yeah. Get Gonzo in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's well, I can't wait to hear it. Hopefully, there's somebody in there that is interested, though. Right. You know, like, hopefully, there's somebody that has. They're not going to say anything. Hey. How do you know, dude? I just don't have. I don't think they're going to give us a whole lot. What up, Tom? Indiana guy. Who? Indi Indianapolis. He's representing Indianapolis. I mean, I never get in. Andre uh, Carson. I don't know. Do we know him? No, Trey? but. I mean, can we he reach probably out lives to him? right down the street. We could bring. I him. don't get into politics, but if he asks a couple good questions, maybe I'll donate to the campaign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, that guy. You ask a couple good questions uh, representing Indianapolis, mm -hmm. pal. Like we want some good answers out of this thing. That never happens. I don't fall. Uh, I don't fall close enough to these types of things. Do we get actual answers in these things? What can we, we ask? I don't know. Like, could you ask? Hey, what do you think? What do they look like? What's flying these these things? How many? Do you have? Yeah. One? How many are around? That's all I want to know. Can how we, many are around? Thousands. Can we do the same thing we did know. for the Colts and have you FaceTime in and uh, ask a question? Probably. See, the issue with that is I was inside that building and I made friends in there. I don't think I've done that at government. The one time we were in that building, I had a sleeveless on and they took us to the patio. That's uh -huh. true. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. we're kind of escorted out of there. Yep. See, this is where we need Sleepy Joe Donnelly back in yeah, office we so we could call him. Just sleep right now. Sleepy Joe Donnelly, man. He had no chance at that guy. Might be in Mexico. I was going to say, Mexico Joe, he's probably down there. I don't know enough about politics, but I do know that that guy had zero shot. Nope. Zero. Watching local commercials, this dude was just buzzsawed. Yeah. From beginning of the hour to the top of the hour mm -hmm. and all the hours in between. <laughs> and not even one rebuttal from his team. They're all lying. This message was approved by Joe Donnelly. Like, that's literally <laughs> all he had to make. Yeah. All he had to make was, this ain't true. What you just heard for the last two hours and what you're going to hear for the next three hours isn't true. And then this message has been approved by Joe Donnelly. Maybe it would have helped a little bit. He had no defense. Nope. He, was no, he, was, he was done. Probably it cost did. money. It cost money to defend yourself and put those commercials out. He was on an RV across the state, he said. And I'm like, you need to get out of that RV and fucking into panic mode, pal. Right yeah. now. Because things are not going well. Big surprise. Uh, and I've... I've gloated about this a lot, but I don't know shit about fuck in the politics world. We predicted the big surprise, the first big surprise of the election of 20... 20. 20. 20. 19. 20. 19. 19. 19. 19. It was 19, 19. I think. Whatever it was. Because this guy was just getting hammered on these commercials. None of them were good, by the way. No, I've never seen someone take it on the shins like that, ever. Th th like, you know nothing about politics. You know everything about politics. You watch that, and you're like, 
this guy's the worst politician of all time. Yeah. Get him out. And then when they're continually just saying how lazy and sleepy you are and you don't respond to any of it, you're kind you're, you know, you're kind of telling Wait. him that you are, in fact, lazy and sleepy. Maybe he just quit. Maybe he couldn't take it anymore. Yeah. Probably. Let him fucking kill me. He'll Who came up with the sleepy term? Who calls him Sleepy Joe? Dude, he was called uh, okay. Mexico, Mexico Joe. Joe. Sleepy, Sleepy Joe. This is Sleepy Joe long before. Yeah, it really yeah. was. This is the original Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe Donald. They, they CGI'd him like sleeping in the in the actual like commercial too. It was insane. <laughs> Dude, it was he was in Mexico all the time, all the time. Nice. This guy. They it's put a great him, spot. It's beautiful down there. I agree. I concur. Yeah. But he wasn't helping around here. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> he wasn't helping around here, was he? No. When, this, we, when we saw him, you told him to his face. Hey, man, you had no <laughs> shot. <laughs> so no sorry. chance. Hey, dude, I, tried to, I don't know if anybody told you or whatever. I talked about it loud, loud for a couple weeks. I was like, hey, listen, kind of bumming me out, actually. I'm trying to watch a goddamn game. And all I hear about the entire commercial break is how terrible of a guy this guy is that's representing me. I'm, so I literally started talking about it in the show. Watching the game, blah, blah, blah. Joe Donnelly needs to say something. Yeah. This guy's getting killed. And then I go back to breaking down football or whatever. And I don't know if anybody told him or not, but when I first time I saw him in person, I had to immediately go tell him, like, hey, man, I'm so sorry, but did anybody tell you that we were telling you you were dead? You had no shot. He, ah, what do you want me to do? <laughs> <laughs> he said, yeah, it's 70 million or something, exactly what you guys were saying. And then he was a good guy, though. He was nice to us in there. Sounds like a terrible politician, but yeah. I don't really know the full story because I only saw one side of it. It was tough, though, out there for him. Either Anyways, way. ask some good questions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Please, can we get some real alien information on May 17th? That would be great news. I just figured, like, if if he's the head, then Indianapolis is the head for in for alien research. Wow. Or alien production. Good for us, huh? Yeah. Congratulations. Go. Oh. It's hey. they're building all those new factories and yeah, warehouses. Alien. Oh, oh, alien. They're that might have been in Indiana. Yeah. Evie, you got them right by your house. Yeah. Dude, get, get, get into those underground there. tunnels. You think they're uh, producing more aliens there? Oh, the, a big alien fuck The guy there? from Indy is the head of this what? thing? What was that? Or he's lead counsel asking big questions. Big alien fuck factory. Where is that? Right by, by Foxy's, Foxy's house. house. Mm -hmm. oh. They're all fucking over there. What if he asked that question? They're multiplying? If that's the case, those aliens are fucking big because those are some big factories. Well, of course. Yeah. They're fucking yeah. aliens. Yeah, they're huge. What are we even... You got to sell your house, dude. Is he the head? He's a chairman on the committee. What's that mean? I don't know. Exactly. Everybody's like a VP head. at places. Oh, this person's the vice he's president, the president, manager. There's of... other chairmen, too, though, so... Uh, what uh, the okay, hell? well... Yeah. That's what I'm saying. There's Everyone's a fucking chairman these days. They're... Or a manager or a VP or something. Do so you remember last summer when the Pentagon confirmed yes. and put out those Navy videos? That's what this is about. They've got two Pentagon officials that are going to testify about that report from last summer. Okay. So we're only talking about Tic Tac or TikTok, I believe. Tic Tac? The little tiny yeah. one that was moving Tic -tac, super fast. Yeah. Tic Tac. Mm -hmm. And then what was the other one? I don't remember the other one. Uh, it was just videos that Navy pilots uh the one you and Evie saw. Yeah, the, well, the Tic Tac one is the one that they're talking about. It was a little one. The internet had known about this for years. Mm -hmm. The Pentagon just kind of okayed it. It's very small though. Right. I mean, and the nope. fighter, it was the fighter pilot saw it, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and it had locked on the uh, yeah. what you call it. Right. Hopefully, we learn some. Let's get back to football. <laughs> nope. Let's get back to. There ain't nothing to talk about. Let's go to the fence. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, uh, Joe and Scranton on the Five Energy phone line, Joe? Hey, Tom. Tom and uh, Aaron, though, on the match. I'm sure Aaron will ask him many oh. times about this new box. Oh. What you thinking about? Oh. Tom's going to be. Hey, Joe, going back on hold, pal. Sorry about Sorry, it. Sorry, Joe. Hey, that's real. Aaron, hey, this is. Is Tom going to do a podcast? I assume Tom will do his own podcast at some point. Just keep that. Yeah. Why would he, he just keep going. it when he has? That one's killing it. Jim Gray? Oh, you think he'll do that one? I, yeah. I assume. I don't know, because him and Jim Gray are buddy buddy, right? Because he did a that's conference friends. with him a few years ago. I mean, he could join uh, Harry and uh, Meghan Markle. On theirs, I actually just saw Piers Morgan said they're done. They're done for. Everyone, what do you mean, do you mean they're done for? Everyone's done with Markle and what? Harry, whatever his name is. No, yeah. they're what done, that, they're what done a podcast, yeah. said. Yeah, I know. And didn't they get paid $50 million and they've never yeah. released one because now they kind of lost their luster, apparently? No, they did the Oprah yeah, show. Well, oh, Piers yeah. Morgan yeah. and even that Oprah show, that was a long time ago. And Piers Morgan knows. Especially in the British. Oh, uh, I feel like you're gonna you, you're doing something right now. No, I, I don't know enough about what you just spoke about. No, 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 no. You got us into some sort of war. No, right? there's no war. You just pissed somebody Pierce off. Just no. doesn't like, Pierce just doesn't like what they've done, right, Connor? Yeah, and Piers Morgan actually is like uh, pe people listen to Piers Morgan over there in UK. Is this serious right I'm, now? I'm we don't know if that's true. No. We have no idea if that's true. I am serious. I remember Piers Morgan. I understand that Piers Morgan is probably a notable over sure. there, but who knows if he is. 
just universally beloved, right? I would assume he's in the politics world, probably a little split on him on whether he's or not. over I, there now. He, he Some, was just doing like a morning show. I don't think he was doing a p political show, whether he was Oh, on, so he's like Michael Strahan, Carson Daly? Uh, also, wow. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. He does exactly. like Good Day UK or whatever. Yeah, so he does. like. So he's not in politics. Anymore. No, but in, he, he's tied in with like pop culture and knows what he's talking about when it comes to how the people are feeling. He said they don't like uh, Meghan Markle and Harry anymore. It seems like the tide has turned and no one really gives a shit about them. Oh, so maybe they do have podcasts. Nobody listened to them. Maybe that's what it's all about. That's that's what the 50 million is I don't know if they put any out. Did you look? Name is over. No, I just, I like everybody else, I just heard about it and read about it, saying they hadn't put real, I don't know if they put one out, maybe, but 50 mil, it's a great deal if they got paid still. Well, they're part of the royal family, you never understand. Well, well yeah, they not took anymore. themselves away. Yeah, they got, they, they've been eliminated from the royal they family. They said, see ya. Yeah. Oh, so they're not getting like a pension or whatever? Nope. No. Oh, no. <laughs> that was the hard out. <laughs> yeah. That was the hard out on the radio right there. <laughs> So Pierce Morgan, authority on how all of England feels. Yeah, he is a guy over there. <laughs> I don't think so. He is. So I, like, I don't know enough about. I'm telling you. So he's but nothing I just, like Carson Daly then. Carson Daly, Carson, universally. Yeah, beloved. what are you talking about? TRL, what, the most watched show in the history? Yeah. Yeah, not because of him. Uh, oh, he was the, he was putting asses in seats. No, 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 how no. do you get from 10 to 9, no, the, 9 to 8, 8 to 7, 7 to 6, 6 to 5, 5 to interview? Okay. Okay. Oh, Interview the oh. outside shot. Sure. Yep. To four, mm -hmm. three, two, and then how do you make dreams come true without fucking Carson Daly on the biggest show yeah. TRL? I well can tell time. you who was putting asses in those seats, and it was the asses in the music videos. Okay, it had nothing to do with Carson <laughs> Daly. Tony. Tony. What about the Backstreet Boys? Yeah, dude? The good yeah. music. Yeah, great. Tony Stefani. Insane. He was first name basis friends with Bob Ritchie. Do you not remember? Oh. Now listen. Ba that is TRL is where we all learn about ball with the ball, the yeah. bang, the bang, the diggy, 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 said the boogie, said the boogie, jump, the boogie. <laughs> On cue there, that's for TRL interest. Is that when he wrote the penis rocket? No, no this is much no. later. That is that is modern. Yeah, that's we the people. <laughs> oh, that's right. right. Okay, so this show has turned way too. And that's why when you say things like that, <laughs> when you do the Pierce Morgan thing, like I have to be like, all right, I don't know if that's 100% accurate. Understandable. But I, I'm pretty sure I'm on this one. And I'm not bringing him up because he just did something terrible or anything like that. Feels like Pier I'm People listen to Pierce like anyone else. I'm sure there's a lot of people that agree with him and a lot of people that hate him, just like anybody else. Well, that's what I'm assuming. Yeah, Connor speaking with absolutes here. This is what he's doing. There's no absolutes anywhere. Thank you, Connor. This is a lesson. <laughs> Connor, let's continue to learn that. Absolutes. Tatum last night. 40 points. Well, plus 1,000. Bounce back. How you doing? He's going to do it. He did not. No, but he had like 20-something in the second half. He had a very good game. And how was I supposed to know Al Horford was going to turn the clocks back to 1980 when he was 19 years old? We just need questions to be asked at this alien thing. Yeah. That's all I ask. Mm -hmm. Just some good questions to be asked. Please. What's the first question? How many? Uh, yes. yes. How many of them? Where they come say, from? I don't know. They're going to say we don't know. Okay, so is that because there's too many, or is that because you actually don't know? Uh, can they kill us? They can yeah. Do they like us? Do we have relationships with them that are friendly? Are there any dumb ones? Are there dumb have ones? Have we seen any like forms of people, or just have we seen like vehicles? So like Men in Black, mm. is Elon Musk potentially a little e -e 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 inside of the brain of what we see as Elon Musk? How much... Uh, uh, how much do we know about? Is there different, you know, genres? Is there different avatars? Is there different? What do we saw know? the preview? Saw the trailer? Nope. What? Not gonna cut it, Jim. Come on. Not gonna Bro, cut it. How about the same helicopters? That was a problem to me. Same exact helicopters. The whole thing felt really weird. Well, how about when Jacob Sully starts talking again? You're like, oh yeah, that's how he talks. I got to get through that. Yeah, I yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to knock his work. I know he spent $17 billion of his own money and whatever, but we'll see how it goes. He had $17 billion. That's a lot of money. He deserves it because that movie's going to be unbelievable. Andre Carson has put out some... Uh, Congress hasn't held a public hearing on unidentified aerial... All right, he's using a new... I get it. They're trying to push through the UAP thing. In over 50 years, that would change next week when I, had, uh, when I lead a hearing... Okay. Thank when you. I lead a hearing in House Intel on this topic and the national security risk it poses... Americans need to know more about these Hell unexplained yeah. occurrences. Hey, let's go, Rep. Andre Carson. Hey, what hey, you get him, Andre? Hey, we all of us. Huh? 
tweet your rep some questions to ask. I just He'll did. Yeah. I just rattled off like 13 of them, 14 yeah. of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. If you could please. I can't wait. Take that into your account. Make, make, make me a part of your focus group. I'm very intrigued by all this. Should we put it under the tweet, that video, just all the questions? Just put it under there. Yeah, this is what we're thinking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> this is what one of your constituents is thinking. I don't know what everybody else is thinking, but definitely me. He's leading that meeting. Let's go. He's got the gavel then. Is that what that means? Yeah. I, 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 objection. I, I think so. I would assume so. What if he just stop fucking with us, Pentagon? <laughs> what if he does that? We need answers. Do we know these guys testify and have been compromised? Yeah, who knows oh, if they can tell the truth. They, they may to. be aliens themselves. That's they what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, shit. They're hybrids. They've been taken over. Well, those operating. exist. There's another question. Add that one to the question. <laughs> can they shapeshift? Is Stephen King a hybrid? Jeez. Oh, it's a compliment. Ty, are you kidding me? No, you're yeah. saying he looks like a weirdo. Not so even he's... close. I'm saying a guy that can come up with all that he has in his brain to write that fear and all that craziness and scary stuff and also be a, a functioning human. I, maybe oh, so you're talking like the Saw writer, too. Yeah, all those people. I mean, yeah, I can come up with some dark stuff. I haven't thought of a lot of that. <laughs> What? All right, get to We're back in about a minute and a half. I mean, I like different bathroom. creative ways that they could. Yeah, of course, of course. The ways move. you've thought about killing people. Yes, right. of course. Yeah, we'll we be back in about a minute, 15 minutes, an hour three. Biz Nasty will be joining us. Can't wait to chat with him in about uh, 2 15 or so. We'll also answer some more phone calls and keep everybody up to date on all the breaking news about everything, including House Intel Committee meetings. Yeah, hell yeah. Who's got range? We do. Yeah. Who says we're a bunch of food gazes? Everybody should because we know nothing about what we're talking about. We'll see you in a minute. McAfee show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat the McAfee Show doing? starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that <laughs> show. Hour three of this glorious Tuesday, May 10th, 2022, shall begin right now. Yeah. AJ has a look on his face as if he's up to something. I assume there's going to be some toxicity flowing out of that mouth that sits upon the best jawline in the history of sports. Oh, yeah. Tone Diggs is here, host of T4, which we will have another uh, episode of. Ooh. Here we go. Coming up here in a matter of moments. Ooh. And the toxic table at Boston Connor at Ty Schmidt. All the boys in the back, I appreciate you all. AJ Hawk, there's a lot of great things happening that are in the playoffs. NBA, NHL, the games have been magnificent other than when the penguins just ragged all the rangers oh, hell yeah. walked. Woo! 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 that's a touchdown to a safety in a hockey game against a goalie that was supposed to be the best goalie in the game going against our third stringer from popper and peasant to prince then king deming in the pipes Pens are about to win Lord Stanley Cup, but hockey is awesome. The NBA is awesome. And there's only one person we turn to to break down all the tournament conversation. And that's our Tone Digs with another episode of T4 Tones Tasty Tournament Talk. Hey, how we doing today? Great, good. It's a great, great day, day. Yeah. T four in it. Yeah, a great day for T four. Let's cover it all. Let's start on the ice, if you don't mind, Pat. Uh, as you referenced, the Kingdom Ming has led the Pens to a three one lead over the New York Rangers. Wow. I mean, at this point, fucking Messier and Phil Esposito are gonna have to come out of the crowd if the Rangers think they got a fucking that ain't, shot. <laughs> that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> and that ain't fucking happening. Messier's talking on uh, TV. I'm seeing him talking. Oh, it's on, on t- fire again. Yeah, he's yeah, studio. kinda. Not yeah, he's, really. He's running in the derby too. Studio's always on fire. We're lit over here, cuz. Hell yeah. That's All called right. electricity. Ever heard of it? <laughs> <laughs> this is T4. Have a little respect. Go on. Uh, after an electrifying night last night in the nation's capital, uh, the Florida Panthers and the Washington Capitals are tied 2-2. Fucking Ovi's flying around. 
fucking Captain America laid somebody. I don't know if it's a dirty hit or not, but you know that's hockey. Who's Captain America? TJ yeah. Oshie. Fucking TJ Oshie. Oh, TJ. So TJ, like somebody else. Oh. About Tom, is Tom, Tom Wilson something? No, that's no, scumbag stinks. They kicked him out of the league. Well, TJ Oshie, they did not, I don't think. But TJ Oshie picked up right where he left off, huh? Blew a guy up last night? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Blew him up and then immediately off the play, off the turnover, uh, Capitals went down and scored. Took a lead, 2-1. Florida Panthers ended up tying up late, go to overtime, end up winning yeah. the game. But it was a it was a pretty big hit, massive Empty moment. that situation. Wow. Was fucking, TJ Oshie doing that thing. Um, in the uh, Avs and and Pred series, Pekka Renee could not stop fucking Forsberg and Sackick and, and Patrick Waugh. Fucking Avs 4 0 fucking sweep of the Predators. Wow. Um, the Flames tied it 2 uh, 2 with Texas hockey last night. Pekka oh. Renee does not play for the Predators. He for sure was a natural. Pekka Renee, big Pekka, big swing, and Pekka wouldn't let them get swept for No, 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 no. He's no, too no. good. Can they you clarify? Them. Can you? His jersey was retired this year. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Um, He's always in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> they're in Big Pekka's house when they're skating. So around who's the night. goalie? Connor Ingram. Good he, player. He doesn't want his name being said anyways. They just no, got no, swept. Yeah, yeah, got by swept. The I think a massive bet was placed on the avalanche, by the way. I think. I don't I don't know if it's been. Okay. I think. We More got to run. Come. Somebody made maybe the biggest hockey bet in registered history. Uh, oh, they like the avalanche a lot, I think. Uh, to close out last night, um, Texas hockey and their cannons. Couldn't stop the flames last night, uh, so that series is two two. A lot of big time clap bombs on that Texas yeah. hockey. Big time Connons down there in Texas hockey. Um, tonight we got four games. They're all tied two two in the series. Connons, talking Connons. Um, Canes are tied two two with Boston. They hit bombs. <laughs> what? They hit bombs. They do fucking slappers from right behind the bench. Okay. <laughs> Doesn't feel like that's not that's the sense I get from the rim that that's what you're chatting about. We'll see. Um, hopefully more. Uh, Canes are tied 2-2 two -two versus uh, see, Boston. They go tonight. It is continued. You're not talking about clap bombs, I don't think. No. What are you talking about? No, Tony? he's not talking about hockey pucks. Fucking those things could have been what? clapping around. I don't What's know. What's going on, dude? <laughs> what? What is getting clapped? You'll see. Canes are tied 2-2 two -two versus Boston. You they go tonight. Back there? Oh, oh, yeah. This is toxic. Some defenseman's out for Boston. He stinks anyway. Some defenseman. Okay, Charlie McAvoy, one of the best in the league. Jordan, yeah, he respect. fucking can't beat COVID, though, so the guy Charlie. stinks. Well, we won 5-2. Everyone's like, we got to do this for fucking Chuck, and we did. Jordan Stahl is uh, absolutely dominating the series, uh, so they go tonight again. Uh, the Leafs are tied 2-2 with Toronto, and by the Leafs, I mean they are Toronto. Leafs and Lightning are tied 2-2. Um, this guy knows hockey. Yeah, <laughs> we're back tonight. Blues are 2-2 with uh, the Wild. That goes tonight. And then uh, Kings are 2-2 as well. Jonathan Quick is standing on his head against fucking Touchdown Jesus and Dreisaitl. A lot of very important games. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. no real – other than the Avalanche, right, it feels like every series has had yes. other than the Pens. Pens and the Rangers, which is 3-1. Everything's close right now. It's great for the NHL because the NHL playoff hockey is awesome to watch. If you've never watched hockey, you don't know about hockey, hockey's available for you now to watch, and the NHL playoff hockey is worth a watch. It is – so fast, there's so much shit going on. You might get lost, but whatever the case, you'll catch up inevitably. Try not to just follow the puck exactly. Try to see what everybody else is cooking. It's a great sport, great time, and they got some great games going on. Thanks. Yeah. Um, do we want to go to the association? Absolutely. Okay, let's head yes. to the association. Last night, an absolute barn burner. Uh, Golden State was ten and a half point favorites against. Um, the Memphis Grizz, which is insane because the Grizz were 22-5 and five without Jaw. I'm not an idiot, so I'm not going to say that they're better with Jaw, but they're a fucking damn good team even without Jaw. So that was that was a three-point win by the Warriors. Now Steve Kerr is going to be out. because Easiest know, bet of the night, though, 10 and a half. Huh? Yeah, we Wait, how it. long is Steve Kerr out? I thought just last night. Well, he's got COVID. We don't know. I know. We don't know if he's going to survive. We hope what's he the, survives. What's the protocol he's, like now? How long is he He's an older gentleman. We hope he fucking survives. That, don't worry about protocol or the game. This is about you're life. Right, you're right. I stand down. I'm sorry. Charlie McAvoy, too. Who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. And in a really other – and there was two Just really real quick, that is why, right, that they have to miss the game because they have COVID because yeah. the fear is that they could potentially kill people, right? Yeah, I think so. I believe that's mm -hmm. still the uh, – That is the reasoning behind why the thing is the thing? Is that what that believe. side's still running with? Or? Well, Jesus. Jeez. That's Tony. That's, uh, you don't know what side anybody's on whenever you're <laughs> stating. I get to the mask side, okay? It's the wrong side. Take them off. We're fine. Well, um, in another <laughs> great game last night. That is, um, he can't help himself. I can't fucking can't do it. Won't do it. Okay, I ain't fucking wearing it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. 
Jesus. Milwaukee, Christ. Boston. It was a one point game. The opinions of the Cowboys. <laughs> no, 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 actually, I mean, I am also. <laughs> yeah, I actually yeah, had yeah, a, yeah, like yeah. a 20 minute thought yesterday. Like, are people just going to wear these forever now? No, I saw yes. somebody. So I Raw last night. Saw somebody, row. A, saw somebody ran a marathon with one on. Now, that person <laughs> might have. The person Jesus. might have been outside or inside. Golf shorts and a belt as well. No, I mean, <laughs> superhero. I appreciate everybody being safe. I understand it. Whatever you got to do, whatever makes you happy. But also, like, come on. Come on. Don't make me feel bad about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking summer 2022. Let's fucking live, all Let's right? Let's live, huh? The sun's out. Hey, here we go, boys. Here we go. Fucking summertime we in northern Michigan. People. Let's go up to Milwaukee. Yes. Hey, did the, did the pollen, does that save me from the pollen? Yeah, mm -hmm. for sure it does. Maybe I need to. Huh? Maybe well, I'm the dumbest. Wear sunglasses. Paul, you can still get in your eyes. I was yeah, wear say sunglasses. That, that saving. That's why Tiger wore sunglasses on the course sometimes because he's got bad allergies. Oh. Really? What about the flu? That'll stop me from the flu, right? This thing? I don't know about that. I, studies studies show probably. Wash your hands. Not. I think you're good for So, the what flu. is that thing? That thing is just stopping COVID? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it only yeah, stops. Painter's high. I thought it was like germs. And if general. you're doing surgery. Wow. Well, not stop a painter's high. You no, need well, a respirator. Yeah, you friend. need a respirator. Oh, okay. Dust masks is old school. I used to wear those when they sprayed, though. So you're saying whenever I get out there with some, uh, you know, some spray paint on the house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, you let that eat. Don't worry about that stuff. That's water soluble. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's the stuff that is oil? Uh, oil no, this, that would be the epoxy, two component paint, antifouling in that stuff. Ooh, good luck. You not, good, not good to inhale. No. You yeah. should smell it first. Asbestos. Give a big old whiff to no, determine it not. beforehand. Wait, good smell like other paints, some, uh, some paints and nah, gas it's have? It's pretty aggressive when it gets going. That's a problem with like some gas. Some people like enjoy the smell of yeah. gas. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Enjoy I do. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. Love it. Every yeah. time I fill my car, every once in a while, I just splash a little on my hands when I'm done. Just keep it in the car for the yeah. rest of the night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Definitely. That's what that. happens. You get any on you, it's there for the rest of your life, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Hell of a smell. Gas has good staying power when yeah, it comes yeah, it to That's why those guys, don't, in that, who was it? Who started that or made that public that, hey, on the way home from the strip club and everything, they spill some gas on themselves at the <laughs> gas station so they don't smell like booze and cigs and strippers. <laughs> Who, who wouldn't want to smell like that, though? I've heard, I've, uh, I've heard multiple NFL ex-players say that, and a couple oh. of them have been on this show, actually. I think you throw on it. this show? Why are you trying to throw everybody on the bus? They've said I don't that think publicly. They've said it publicly many times. Throw oh, a okay. chew in, too, if you're getting pulled over. Um, Eat some peanut butter. <laughs> So this is, I believe, or no, chew on pennies. Sorry, sorry. chew on pennies. Just for, I think you're talking about for cops. I think they're talking about for different reasons. Uh -huh. But whatever the case, I like the fact that we are all trying to yeah, disguise yeah. fuck ups. Yeah. Okay. Just to clarify, you don't chew on pennies. You put it under your tongue, Tony. You can chew on them if you want, though. Still doesn't work. I don't think any of this is going to work. By the way, no, no. I don't think it so. doesn't. Can we get back to ball? Jesus. I've actually talked to a friend that gave one of them a go. He had a blow and go for the next two years. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. Yeah, it did not work. He was. I thought. How do those work? The, the blowing bongo, goes. You yeah. gotta, it, you gotta pass a test. It's like an unlocking almost. And then you're allowed yeah, you to turn yeah. the keys, or yeah. No, it's attached to your ignition. It, mm -hmm. yeah. You have to blow under to start. Yeah. Damn. It's like an unlock. And it'll randomly test you. Hey, you got a sober friend. You blow in it, and then you drive home. <laughs> Jesus, <What>? AJ. <laughs> Why would the sober friend just drive? Okay. What's your problem? Exactly. That's your part of the joke. That's from a movie. Part. Okay, my bad. Oh, oh, it's from a movie. Yeah. Oh, it's bad. Bad. It's movie this lines. Dude, I don't know anybody car? that's ever had a blow. Twenty twenty two. There's no reason to drunk drive. No reason okay, to I, do it. I don't. I am highly, highly against it. I think it's. Mm -hmm. I think it's just dumb, actually. Yeah, but you're just telling people who potentially have. I mean, well, you I fall mean, okay, asleep normally I'll be dead too. I'm sorry. What if you've been kicked off of Uber and Lyft from? Puking no in more the cars jokes. all the time. <laughs> no more jokes. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry about it. Sorry about it. When's Paul Bizonette coming, Pat? Well, <laughs> actually, a minute and five seconds. But you're right. The blow and go, the thought of somebody blowing that, there's always going to be people that can manipulate any situation. I mean, it's just yeah. always going to be the way it is. I seen a, uh, a my, my friend that had the blow and go, he would drive that thing to a bar. And then he'd just leave it overnight. And ah. it, it was like a new home there or whatever. It's, why drive? If you know you're going to be driving, why drive there when you know you're going to be getting hammered? Dude, uh, people that get Find hammered. Away. There's people that get hammered every night, man. I don't understand how they do it. I had a couple beers the other day. I'm, I was fucking done for <laughs> literally like the next 72 hours. I don't know how people are still doing it. Very impressed by their livers and their dedication. But the driving, that used to happen so much more, I feel like, with the, the invention of Uber and everything. Yeah. Huge. It's a much different world. Shouldn't I feel do like. it. What's that? Shouldn't do it. Back in the day, I mean, it wasn't even talked about as like that bad of a thing, I feel like, in some parts of the world. I'm not saying where we grew up, but like out in the country out here, I oh, met yeah. some people. A lot and they're of people like, do it. Yes, it was just like standard. Different generations. It's different, like older generations, too. I'm like, oh, 
that person has never had a DUI, might maybe because they've never even thought about it. Never, it never crossed their mind like, oh, I may be too drunk to drive. They're thinking, no, what are you talking about? I'm fine. Like I know people that are old that it's never even. They never thought about getting a ride home. I'm three turns away from my bed. Okay, <laughs> and that is like literally probably just one country road back another one, and then their driveway will be there. I'm fine, and that was just like standard operating procedure. That's out here in India. I met these people and talked to these people. I'm like, holy shit you guys don't really care but it's out in the middle of nowhere different life nowadays can't do it anyways joining us now <laughs> absolute icon all right this guy legend a man that was dominating twitter before anybody else was dominating twitter he has pivoted that into a rocket ship of a media career of barstool sports co-host of the spit and chicklets podcast ladies and gentlemen paul business <laughs> So, Fucking right. That's a nice little intro there. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on. The, te the team's grown. Hey, yeah, we got a whole squad. This is AJ Hawk, by the way. Similar mentalities, I believe, you and he. I'm a big Packers fan. I, I watch you play, man. Congrats on a wonderful career, and congrats, congrats on the transferring it to this, man. Fucking right. And a baby. Appreciate eight. it, man. I listen to all your stuff. You're awesome. Oh, yeah, oh, you're oh, hey, 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 hey Biz, I just heard you. going on. Biz, I heard your uh, Felino interview. It just came out. I actually just happened to listen to it. Felino, I'm a, I live in Columbus, so I used to watch him play all the time. Yeah, we've we've had both the brothers on. We still got to get the old man, but uh, a, a great family, and uh, both of them still kicking in playoffs. Boston, I thought they were done for, but they're uh, they're storming back against the Carolina Hurricanes. Oh, yeah. Ho hockey playoffs have been wild right now, boys, and I would imagine that's probably why you had me on. Yes, by the way. <laughs> and also your coverage has been fantastic. I think this is big for the NHL going to Turner and to ESPN. Obviously on Turner, you and Gretzky in there and so many other. I mean, the way they're covering it is awesome. For you, has it been interesting going straight into like the uh, sports media world where you're like breaking down the tape and breaking down aspects of it versus the podcast in which you all are hilarious and have better conversations than the sports media people? Have you had difficulties bouncing back and forth? And how have you enjoyed the TV aspect of it all? Yeah, so I was born French Canadian. So like English, really, it's I mean, I'm like 50 50 as far as how well I can speak it. So and of course, growing up in a locker room, like I'm swearing every other word. So transforming into, you know, to go into onto the national stage is very difficult. Like normally, I run thing, things through one filter. Now I'm running things through two filters. So definitely been a, a trans. Uh, it's been a tough transition. I've been called in a few times and gotten pee pee whacked for a few things that I've said on the air um, pee -pee. regarding the girls jugs the other night behind the Dallas Stars bench. Oh, yeah. that's what you guys were talking yeah, about. Tony I, I, was you guys, about. Oh, I didn't we see that. We were just that. talking about this. I didn't see this. that, Pat. I yeah, didn't you, see you, that. Yeah, you did. You said cannons yeah, in the Dallas Stars. We were talking about fucking from the blue line. I was talking about clap bombs, I thought. I, didn't I know told you they were bombs behind the, the bench. Pro yeah. Probably the nicest set of tits behind an NHL bench ever. Um, but hey, it, it's happened a few times. I think the Leafs had a girl with these like the, the ones that the Leafs had behind the bench were like Dolly Parton size chicks. Like, they must have been like tri triple F's, and you know these girls are just out there promoting their OnlyFans behind the coaches, basically. So uh, yeah, but it, it's it's been a little bit difficult. But luckily, with the, the experience of some of the what guys did here, you say? Outside. What did you say? You said that lady's promoting her OnlyFans right there behind the coach on Turner. No, no, I just I was just making comments about basically your jugs. I commented on the DP, and there's been a few other things that I've said where they've called me in. They said, "Hey, buddy, this isn't spitting chicklets. You need to tone it down." So I appreciate them working with me and helping helping with the transition but yeah it, you know it, it's hard right because you're, you're you're going from podcast forum where you're able to articulate your thoughts and and talk for you know two three minutes and then all of a sudden you got to get out your point very fast so i'm not you know i didn't go to any broadcast school and, and i'm not the most polished speaker so with that french background and that that locker room talk i'm definitely uh, easing into it but as i mentioned the guys have been great working with wayne talk anson and liam have been incredible and buddy after these broadcasts some nights we go to wayne's room till like four or five in the morning this guy is the biggest guys guy will crush beers he will tell me all these iconic stories and back oh, stories god for, buddy it, it's a dream come true and that alone is is incentive enough for me to fly out here once a week or, or twice a week and and do this gig just to hear these behind the scenes stories of of, of the greatest hockey player of all time that's awesome did you have any relationship with Gretzky before you got on this show? And, and like, I didn't know you're getting you know hang out with the dude after shows and hear all these stories. Like, is, is he what you expected? 
but he's he's what I expected and more. But uh, so when I was playing in Arizona, I actually uh, was buddies with his kids. And he was the head coach for the Arizona Coyotes the year before I got there. And the year I got there, they ended up going a different direction. I don't know how it all played out. But because the market was down in Arizona, he kept his house in PV. He had this beautiful mansion. And his kids were going to ASU. So both of his sons and their best friend, Joey Superstein, were living in this mansion. And they would throw shakers every weekend. So we would have home games on Saturday. We would go to the bar, and then we would go back to his place. And let's just put it this way. Like, I was batting a 1,000 at this place. The girls were just <laughs> everywhere. It was insane. So I actually ended up knowing his kids before I knew him. So that was uh, that was an easier transition than meeting him because they actually vouched for me and told him when he got the TNT gig, hey, you got to make sure you get biz on. He does spit and chicklets. I think it'll help the broadcast. So Wayne ended up putting in the good word, and then it all worked out. So, um as I said, everything I expected and more, he's been so kind to me. And uh, I really got to thank his kids, Ty and Trevor, uh, for the introduction and uh, and also for helping me get laid. Yeah, and Superstein. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it sounds like Superstein was part of that whole op- operation as well. The um, Whenever you talk about spit and chiclets, though, being a reason for why you're getting a job on Turner from Wayne and from his kids there, I think that's incredible because starting something on the internet at Barstool and then creating something that is relevant enough and impactful enough and puts a dent in everything enough that it is used as a reason for why you should get one of the biggest jobs in hockey right now is really cool. Why do you think the NHL in hockey has been so poorly marketed, especially with how good are the personalities like you and Wit and everybody talks to on your show. Like, I feel like we're learning more about the NHL through Spit and Chicklets than we have from the NHL for the last 40 years, basically. Why do you think that is the case, and do you think this will continue to grow? I, I just think cocky guys are a little bit more reserved than maybe other sports. And, uh, you know, you kind of you know follow the team concept, and you don't really you know go off in your own way. And actually, when I... I ended up starting Twitter. I think like a lot of people were like shocked at what was going on there. Keep in mind, I was a lot more aggressive in my early days than I am now. I've definitely toned it down as the social line has moved as well. So even like <laughs> even when I started doing that, I don't think if I was with the Arizona Coyotes organization, I would have been allowed to do it. Like if I was playing with the Toronto Maple Leafs, they would have shut down my, my account in no time. So I just think that sometimes you know, guys kind of just fall in line and maybe don't show enough of their personality the way they would, let's say, in the locker room. And, you know, I just was always the type of guy to really beat to my own drum. And I think that, you know, once the Twitter started and and I felt that the fans really embraced it because they're like, finally, you know, someone who's willing to just kind of let it fly online and represent the hockey world as to the way we are in the locker room and in our normal lives. And I think that that just gave me the confidence in order to kind of keep it going and growing. And, And, you know, as my career ended, much like yours, you're like, you you, want to bring, you know, the fans that that love the game and who paid our salaries more enjoyment uh, because I couldn't bring it to them on the ice. That's why. Uh, Other than maybe scrap it. Hey, hell of a career. 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 A lot of health bombs. A lot of healthy scratches. But, (laughs) but, uh, you know, we want to bring them these behind the scenes stories. We want to interview these players and show off the personality that maybe they wouldn't have been comfortable sharing on on maybe a, a typical mainstream network and, and or just in general. So I, you know, it, it, it's, it's been, a, it's been a bit of a whirlwind transforming it into the, like from just starting Twitter to what we've created, much like you guys have done here and you guys are even, you guys are on planet Zoltan compared to where we're at. No, no, no. But I think that, I think that it's, it's it, it just, you know, it, not many guys have been willing to do it, but you know, now I feel like more guys will start to not only seeing the response from the fans, but maybe the, the, the bags are, guys are starting to collect. And, and I know today was probably the, the, the epitome of that. I think, um, I honestly, are you talking about Tom Brady, $375 million? Yes, that is absolutely insane. Awesome. awesome. Can it's we awesome. give him a round of another yeah, one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. We I did just earlier. started a football podcast for crying out loud. <laughs> no, no. Well, that's what I was about to say. Like, I feel like you guys. You guys have gotten much faster than we ever did, much faster than we ever did, much bigger than we ever did, because I think 
hockey fans, like you said, as a representation of the entire community, like as a genuine hockey fan, I was excited to meet and hear about these fucking dudes that I knew nothing about for whatever reason because it never fell into my world. But what you guys did with the Pink Whitney's, I mean, you guys, smart business, good business. Like I'm fucking excited to watch you guys continue to grow and continue to go. Yeah, and, and you know, I, I love that type of stuff. And, and that one happened organically with uh, New Amsterdam coming on as a sponsor. And then, you know, Witt just mentioned what his favorite drink was. And then all of a sudden, all these fans are sending us pictures. And, I, and my business manager is like, yo, we got we to gotta do this thing. And, I, you know, we went back to Barstool and I went back to Witt. And Witt was like, buddy, we, we do a hockey podcast. We're, we're not doing a, a, a vodka here. <laughs> And with a lot of persistence and then finally them agreeing to do it, it happened. And then all of a sudden, college girls across America love this stuff. And, you know, we're selling 1.2 million cases a year of Pink Whitney. And, uh, it, you know, and that kind of took on a mind of its own. But the, 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 good, the good part about that, too, is, you know, as the finances grew, it gave us more ability to hire more staff. Uh, you know, travel more, oh, be yeah. able to get better interviews and just have more resources in order to keep growing the brand. So. You know, it, it's as I mentioned, it's been a world whirlwind. I'm extremely grateful for for a guy who, you know, was was lucky enough to make the league uh, and get to play in Pittsburgh and Arizona. And I'm sure we're going to get to Sidney Crosby soon. Um, you know, I, I'm 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 very blessed about where it's brought me. Biz, before you get to Sidney Crosby, can you take some of those proceeds and maybe uh, throw it to your old squad in Arizona? Have, are they getting kicked out of their arena for not paying their rent? Have they figured that out yet? It has been a bit of a gong show, boys. So yeah, <laughs> they, we will be playing at ASU in a 5,000-seat arena for hopefully only the next three to four years. And um, originally, time. Our, <laughs> next three to four years. Well, they, yeah, they haven't even started construction, so they're trying to lock down some land in Tempe, which. I can understand why the league is tripling down on why they originally brought it to Arizona and why they want to keep it there because the market's flourishing. And if you're near that old town and that, that you know, Viagra Triangle vortex, it would, you know, people can go to the game and it might be kind of that Vegas feel too, where even, you know, fans from out of town watching their away team can come in, maybe get more affordable tickets. So there's, there would be tons of success if they were able to have the arena in the right location. They ended up breaking ground in Scottsdale, and then Glendale came along, and they said right before they started construction, and basically said, we're going to give you the land for free, and we're going to build this brand-new facility. And at the time, Glendale was one of the fastest-growing cities in America. But nonetheless, not the area you want to be. It's 30 to 35 minutes from the action. So they did, and just when the team hasn't done so well, they really struggle for attendance. When the team has done well, when I was there, we made playoffs three years, three years in a row, the attendance would grow, but not, not a solution for long-term success. So the new owners came in, they got hit with COVID, and they've been battling with the arena. There's been tons of conflict, which I, I can't get into details because I'm just a bagel boy for the organization, so I don't know that much. Yes, there were situations where they didn't pay their rent on time. So after all that conflict, they figured a solution for a part-time they will be playing at ASU near an area where they eventually may build the rink. So as of right now, they don't have the land locked in in order to build. If they don't get it within probably the next 18 months to, to two years, there is a chance that the team does relocate. No! I know. No! I know. Because I, I love living there, and I still work part-time for the organization. I'm just trying to be as honest as possible about the situation, but – I pray that they end up figuring out the arena situation and get it done at Tempe because, as I mentioned, it is, it's a fun place. You get all these bachelor parties that come in. You get all this craziness in Old Town. It's a party town. There's 5 million people in that area. You cannot mess it up. So hopefully they can get things on the right track and, uh, and, and get that arena built. All right, let's go. Yeah, here we go. Uh, three to four years. Come on, yep. Zona. Three to four years. Let's dive into the playoffs now, Biz. Hey. Sidney Crosby ain't going to let this team die, especially if they got King Deming in between the pipes. 7-2 last night over the fucking worthless Rangers mm -hmm. who Fuck came the out. the Rangers. Yeah, agreed. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. There's a Rangers Worst fan, fan base yeah. in sports. Worst yep. fan oh. base in sports. Why is that? Why is that? Just so I can continue to bury uh, Bruce. Mo mostly because of their fans online. So, I mean, you can't hold it against all of them, but... They are just brutal. You can't be even the slightest bit critical of what they got going. 
They were a run and gun team all year long, giving up way too many high danger scoring chances. They relied on their young stud goaltender who's going to win the Vezda and Shesterkin. And I knew with the structure that the Penguins had, have, excuse me, the leadership in that locker room with Sid, Gino, Letang, I was like, they, this might be their last dance. I think that they got one last run in them and they're going to go all the way. The only thing that sucks is they weren't able to pick up Flurry at the deadline in order to bring the band back together. Oh, I would have had a full raging hockey boner if they would have done that. <laughs> you but too. nonetheless, you too. this is this is what they do. Even when they went on that that second run when they beat uh, Nashville, they had no Latang, they had no Dumoulin. They dealt with injuries, but they're so strong in the middle of the ice, and they have that leadership from Sid, and that's why I think that they're going to go to the potentially go to the promised land again. Yeah. Although. The parity in the league and the amount of wagon teams that are involved, they still have a very difficult road ahead. But I, I, I love Sidney Crosby. He is the greatest ambassador of our generation. Yes, he and, is. and I couldn't have more positive things to say about the guy. Well, let's have more positive things to say about him. I know you said uh, Gretzky, best player of all time. I assume that's just all hockey circles. In my eyes, okay. Sidney Crosby, best player of all time. Mario Lemieux, number two right there. Wayne, close three, though. I mean, those three, <laughs> those three right there in the conversation. Me, specifically because I was old enough to celebrate what Sidney Crosby brought to Pittsburgh uh, in multiple times in the way he wanted to do it. So I think that is why I view him as the greatest hockey player on earth, because there has been great times oh, yeah. because of Sidney Crosby or whatever. He is so good at everything, right? That's what separates him from everybody else, right? He's just good at the entire game of hockey. And why is that the case with him? as opposed to everybody else? I, I mean, let's go back to the start. Like, he, he was this phenom, and he had the, the weight of the world on his shoulders, and he, and he's and he's ran with it. He, he's never made any mistakes off the ice. He's so humble. All he does is, is, is continue to excel his game, not even during the season. As soon as the season ends, he takes a little bit of time off. He's back at it training you know, two times a day, six days a week. Um, you know, as far as adjusting his game, sometimes when you come out a junior and these guys are collecting 150, 200 points, you know, they don't necessarily transition their game well to the NHL style because all of a sudden you're playing against guys who are just as skilled. And he was able to not only develop his game on the defensive side and learn situational awareness at the NHL level, but also on top of that, add that leadership to his game where, you know, he, he'll sacrifice at any time. You saw at the end of the game the other night when they were up, he could have easily took the, the puck to the net in that last seven minutes a few times. And what did he do? He took it. He went and ate it below the goal line, killed the clock, took short shifts, and then he goes off the ice, makes an ozone change so fresh bodies can come back on the ice so Coach Sullivan can double shift them so they can solidify that win. To see his progression throughout his career <laughs> – and the amount of pressure he had coming in and what he's done with it and lived up to every goddamn expectation that was expected of him, on top of not only the hockey side of it, but the, 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 the ambassador side of it, of how he interacts with fans and how he gives people his time and you know how he didn't get caught up in all the other bullshit. I, I know I didn't get to spend a lot of time with him, but the work ethic speaks for itself. And like getting like talking about him right now, I, I get goosebumps because yeah, me too. I was able to play with the, with the greatest player, in my opinion, of our generation. And, and, and he was always so kind to me. And I, and I, and I pray that he's able to deliver in his final years, one last run to, to that fran franchise and fan base. And uh, I wish him the world, man. Yeah, me too. I wish him the goddamn world. Uh, that was a, that was a major stroke off. I just gave shit. You better come <laughs> on the pot. He better be coming on the pod for another interview after that one. Well, listen, that was a great promo. You, but mm -hmm. it is on this platform, though, so he should come on this show. Yeah. yeah he should <laughs> come on this show, too. You know I'll I mean? text him. I'll text him, and I'll be like, you got to get on the Mac. I mean, you guys could probably get him anyway. But I'll I doubt it. I, I doubt it, honestly. We are not plugged like that. But Sid is the man. I've gotten you very got, intoxicated because of him. You you guys got the hockey podcast going with Rupper now. Rupper played with him. Rupper would easily be able to get you guys Sidney Crosby. What are your thoughts on Rupper? That dude is one of the <laughs> most cockstrong looking guys of all time. That's just big, huge Ohio guy. He he actually uh, beat the shit out of me one time on the ice. So I don't know how many. I don't know how many kind words. No, I'm just, he's an awesome guy. Uh, he beat the wheels off me. He's an absolute bear. Uh, had an incredible career, and, and we had very similar roles, right? So you always, like, talk to guys amongst the league, 
he was always liked. Every team he went to, uh, he, he, you know, everybody has great things to say about him. And of course, when you're you're the guy who ends up protecting everyone, I'm sure they're going to have even more more great things to say about you. So happy to see that after his career and uh, you know and his Stanley Cup and everything that he did involved in the game, he was able to transfer it into the media side, and he's crushing it with you guys now. And uh, and I know you guys are growing that hockey pod as well. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on the name of it, but I know it'll keep crushing as well. All right. I- it's very difficult. That's hockey talk. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay, I got it. There, fuck, I fucked Hell up. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, it's I, got C- I got CTE from Rupper Boy. So no, I just- yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we just heard about it a little bit. But the, the hockey lingo, I think, makes any hockey podcast enjoyable to begin. Dummy, Muppet, mm-hmm. this, that. I mean, you dropped something earlier that was clearly... Shake, was it Shaker? Shaker, yeah, the Shaker. I mean, just the lingo is entertaining in of itself. That's why I'm happy it continues. Oh, here's uh, Zito did some work here in the back. Is that Ru- Rupper? Oh, yeah. He well, cut me open bad. He was, he's large, right? I mean, he's huge. You're at your size. How big are you? I'm 6'2". I was probably 6'2 uh, and a half, 220 when I played. And then now that my playing days are over, I'm probably down to like about 210, 205. So, I mean, AJ, you could probably speak to it more from your position. I'm, I'm sure that you've gone down in weight since you retired. Yeah, a little bit. I got I got light as I – my last couple of years. But, yeah, I'm – Biz, he works out every single day as if he's in training camp. Still? Yeah, like you I think talked I'm about. Naturally Sid. supposed to be what I am. Yeah, yeah, naturally supposed to be what I am. Every morning he's doing what Sid's doing. Were you? You, yeah. you look a lot bigger. I mean, now without you're doing the wrestling gig, did they tell you you got to pack on a few pounds? No, this is where I'm naturally at, Biz. This is just where I'm naturally at. Well, you, the arms look a lot more jacked. <laughs> Come on, that's because I wear tank tops every day. Have to, you know what I mean? Have to do it, Biz. The, the, the tans help. The tans help a lot too. I'm gonna spray tan too. You know, every once in a while, I gotta take a trip out there. But hey, when you're fighting people, you are a, a fighter. Are you left jab or are you right? What is your style of fighting? I'm enjoying watching people's different style of uh, brawling in the hockey world. So, I, when I came up, I was a defenseman, and and I never really fought that much. I just realized at a certain point that I just wasn't good enough to make the league if I was going to stay stubborn and want to stick to my original position. So they actually switched me over to forward in the minors uh, with the Pittsburgh organization. And legit, the writing was on the wall. I came in for a game one time, and I was fourth line left wing, and I was kind of like, okay, yeah, I kind of know where this is going. And I just decided, you know what, I'm just going to start scrapping. And I, I was not a hardcore fighter like some of these guys who were going to stand in there and chuck bombs. I started doing that jersey jab quite a bit because I just didn't want to get caught. So sometimes after doing the jersey jab, you would have time to open up and cock a guy with your right. But you look back to some of these old fights, and and I do the panel with Rick Tockett, who actually led the NHL all time in Gordie Howe hat tricks. (laughs) This guy was nails. They would stand in there, and it was just basically like like an exchange tee-offs right to the face. So I didn't want to go in with that approach with all, you know, with all the, my, my, my rookiness in the fighting Makes department. Sense. So I kind of developed this habit of using the jab to keep the distance away and then once in a while throw the right. So if you ask some old school fighters, they'd say, oh, God, these, you know, these pussies ruin the game of fighting. These guys don't stand in there like the old school boys. But I just had to do that to protect my noggin because I was a bit of a, you know, I, I was a bit soft. And. And as you can see my, by my beak, I think I got caught enough times to where I had to learn to adapt. No, 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 no. I don't, I mean. I got a Chris Drury on my face. I got a banana hook. <laughs> <laughs> and I can't breathe out of one nostril. So That's unbelievable. Hey, fucked up. hey, well deserved. Hey, well yeah, earned. That was right. earned. Woo! That was earned not being able to breathe out of one nose, uh, nostril. Good time. Biz, going into the playoffs, a lot of people were picking the Lightning as like the trendy pick to win it all. And then uh, Toronto kind of, you know, hung in there a little bit. Are they going to choke again? And when is the uh, next time that a Canadian team is potentially going to win Stanley Cup? Is that ever going to happen again? So I, I was riding with the Leafs and with Calgary this year. If I had to put my money on either team, I would definitely put it on Calgary. They're just built for that physical style of playoff game, and their goaltender is, is unbelievable. And, and, of course, if you look at the coach, he's got the experience, won, won a, a couple cups with the L.A. Kings. As far as Toronto's concerned, I, I've, I like a lot of the guys in their team. I sympathize for their fan base. They're much like the uh, Boston Red Sox of, of MLB on how 
they've had this long period of time where they, they've dealt with all this pain and suffering without winning a championship. Oh, oh no. 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 Oh, the Red Sox. The Red Sox have three. Poor cents. millionaires. Oh. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I just figured that the levy would break at some point, and I figured that this year was the year to do it. They end up drawing Tampa Bay in the first round. Now, the good side of that is Tampa's played a shit ton of hockey in the last couple of years with the runs they've been on, but – they were able to reload with getting a few guys at the deadline, and they still have that unbelievable core group with their goaltender. So as of right now, I'm still riding with the Leafs, but if they end up uh, choking, so to speak, oh. I wouldn't be surprised just at the fact that they had this difficult draw in Tampa Bay. But what what's pissing me off about Toronto is Here that they, you know, they show up in game one and they dominate. And then in game two, they lay an egg. And then all of a sudden in game three, they show up again. And then in game four, they lay another egg. So I, I, I'm just flabbergasted at the inconsistency is what do you expect? These guys are the defending champions. In in 16 tries after following a loss, the Tampa Bay Lightning have followed by winning a game. Vasilevsky has not lost back-to-back games in the playoffs in 16 tries. So – from right from puck drop, show the fuck up. How do you allow them to score three, four goals in the first period when you guys have your heads up your ass? So I'm still riding with the Leafs. Pivotal game five at home tonight. If they lose tonight, I think they're absolutely done. Oh. And I will be so pissed off at the fact that I rode with them all season long and believed in this core group to get the job done. So they uh, they got they got a lot of work ahead of them, but uh, let's hope they get it done. But Calgary would be my Canadian team to pick to bring the cup home back to Canada. You sound embarrassed about your uh, Leaf fanship. You sound embarrassed. That's what it sounds like from you. You're like bummed and embarrassed almost. Yeah, I, I mean, I've been talking a lot of shit online all year, and uh, and I think. You know, I, yeah, I'm getting a little bit nervous. Yeah, and I've lost a little bit of money as well. Yeah, well, that'll mm-hmm. help over the years. Go ahead, AJ. <laughs> Biz, can coaches still coach hard in the NHL? Like I've seen so many awesome clips of coaches back in the day, of how, how they how they would speak to players and things like it, coaching them hard, man. Like it was it was no joke. And of course, like Torch trying to fight guys back in the in the hallways between like that stuff's amazing. Like, can coaches still do that, or is it like a new generation? These younger guys are soft. I don't know how it is in the NFL. They're just a lot softer. You can't speak to them the way you used to speak to them. My favorite coach I ever had was a guy named Mike Stuthers. I had him in junior, and, uh, yeah, he, he would scare the shit out of us. Like, he would come in with the video guy, and he had the laser pointer out, and he would go around just, like, ripping guys individually. I ended up having him in the AHL towards the end of my career, and we ended up winning a Calder Cup with him. Hey, here so we go. I, I personally love the guys like Torrance. I like when, when coaches are, are holding guys extremely accountable. In the same breath, though, like him, just like Torts, you hear about every guy loving him when when push comes to shove. Yeah, they might have had it out with a few players, which you know had poopy pants, and they and they asked for trades, and they ended Poopies. up leaving. But for the most part, their players love him, and I, I think that you've seen a major, major shift in the way that coaches have to approach guys at the NHL level, and even so much so where you know a few guys have been canned over some incidences ah. where. You know, the way they, I mean, Babcock would be probably one example where the reason I didn't, the reason I didn't, the reason I, I, I'm really not on Babcock's side about it, though, who used to coach for Leafs is because I felt like there was a little bit of like mental mind game manipulation type shit going on, as opposed to just like if a guy's playing like shit, coming in the locker room and telling him to wake the fuck up and, you know, it's, and, and, and calling him out for his mistakes. So there's definitely a fine line, in my opinion, but. I loved my old school coaches, and I felt that they they taught me so much, not only about the game and, and accountability, it's transformed into real life. I don't think that I would have had the success that I've had post-career if not having those coaches instill those types of things in me. And, and, and I'm sure that you guys might have similar stories as well. Yeah, I think that happens in all sports now. In the new generation, I think they're learning differently. They just kind of are coming up in a much different world. The social world, with it all being right in your hand, I feel like you're much more delicate mentally than maybe in the past where we were just all doofuses, I feel like. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, hey, whatever somebody tells you, you're just like, all right, I guess. And you just got to kind of move along. Now with how intimate everything is, every every terrible thing said about you, you see, I, I don't know, it's just... Uh, it's a different dynamic. I, I don't think I could have made it in this particular one, though. I'm very thankful to be from the same one you just described. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 gnarly, and and and, and you it just is mentioned gnarly. social media stuff. 
like yeah i i couldn't imagine if i was coming up in in junior in my early career uh in, in pro dealing with all this stuff and understanding it i was fortunate enough where i was uh, introduced to it at a later later age where i had a little bit more of an understanding of it i still don't really completely understand it all but i completely agree with what you're saying and um i think that maybe it needs to go back to at least the middle. I yeah. think it's gone a little bit too far the other way. Let's just bring it back to a normal place where uh, where I think that most people in this world agree that it should be. Well, you're going to get chewed out for even saying that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What a fucking oh, yeah, terrible. I'm done. Yeah, bad guy. <laughs> bad guy. I'm in the mix with you and Roger. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bro. I was, hey, I don't know if you, you're kind of breaking up here. I don't know if we should call you back or not, or if you'll get service, but like, uh, it's been a hell of a conversation thus far. We appreciate it. I was in the middle of like the political wars in other countries, Biz. I don't know if you saw that. I don't even know if you're still there. I'm hoping that this, am I back? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're always back, dude. Yeah, you look good. You a big Trudeau fan? Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Connor, your question? Yeah, Biz, uh, for the Bruins, Marshy mm-hmm. and Pasta seemed a little horned up, if you will, in games one and two. After they go home to Boston, now the series is tied and Swayman's back. Are they one of the wagons you were talking about who could go on a run here? So I, I picked Boston to win the series just oh, yeah. based on experience. Uh, am I struggling here, boys, with the Wi-Fi connection? No, you're good right now. Okay. Oh shit! I just fucking hopped back on Wi-Fi. Sorry about that. How am I? I'm I'm butchering the end of this interview here. How am I now? Am I good? No, oh, you're terrible, ladies and gentlemen. That's it. That's it. It's a shame am we I can't good? hear am about. I good? The... Yeah. Am I back? Are you there? Fucking. Biz. <laughs> <laughs> Biz. I just got off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Biz. Oh. Oh. Biz. Oh. Am I back? Biz. Okay, I'm back. Yeah. yeah. Hey, way to work through there. What about it? Hey, yeah. hey, that's that toughness from that hard coaching, Coach Stuthers. That's that hard coaching, getting through adversity there. <laughs> Wi-Fi adversity. Fuck you, Wi-Fi. Yeah! Woo. Imagine if you grew up in the modern era. You would have had that figured out much quicker, but you wouldn't have been able to get through the adversity. No the adversity that you went through right there live on camera. Way to go, baby. Yeah, baby. Way to go. Just the way that Boston did in that series against Carolina. I had Boston going in because of the experience and and the, the injury and goal tending, uh, in, in injury and goal uh, goal to uh, Carolina, excuse me. Oh no! But they went back home and they got back to Bruins hockey. Physical, physical play, oh, yeah. uh, execution from the top two lines, specifically Brad Marshaw. And so we've had Brad Marshaw on the TNT broadcast five times this year, and we call him Mr. TNT now because he scored six goals. So he was kind of playing like shit in the first couple games. He reached out to TNT. He says, I want to be on the broadcast beginning of game three before we go on. And we got him on. This sure as shit, he ends up burying in game three and four. They win both at home. And now I believe they're going back to Carolina with all the momentum in the world. So as far as as far as far guys who are carrying around their balls in a big old wheel, wheelbarrow, Brad Marchand is probably at the top of my list as far as guys who are basically calling their shot and have all the jam in the world to where they're going into uh, – a bit of a shitstorm situation, and they're willing to do it with a smile on their face. Hell yeah. Don't have them on the show. We need a Bruins eye. I don't yeah. know about Bruins that. Eye. These who's, Penguins. Who's going to win the cup? Who's going to win the cup right now if you had to make one prediction? Pittsburgh Penguins, you said? I would love for the Pens if, 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 I, if I was a betting man. Which? It feels like it's, it feels like it's Colorado's time. Oh. They got this kid, um, Kale McCarr. He's probably the best defenseman since, uh, since uh, Bobby Orr. I don't know how much you've got to see him play. The way that he moves out there, he's a video game type player. He, like for for probably the next ten years, he'll bury thirty goals a year. The way that he drives offense, I don't know how many of you saw that game too in Colorado against the Nashville Predators. He had eleven shots on net. This is coming from Wayne too. He goes, that might be one of the best, if not the best, performances by a defenseman I've ever seen in playoff history. So when the goat saying that. You got to agree with him. And then our buddy, Nate Dog, Nathan McKinnon, um, he's been with the organization eight or nine years. 
Uh, they have fumble fucked their opportunities in playoffs before. <laughs> I think that he is a man possessed, and I think that they are probably going to get the job done. If, if if somebody held a gun to my head and said pick a team, I would probably say Colorado. Right? Well, hopefully you don't end up in that situation ever. Mm-hmm. Only good things <laughs> happening going forward. We appreciate you so much. Uh, continued success with Spit and Chicklets and everything else you have going on. We appreciate the hell out of you, man. Hey, all you guys and your whole team, you guys are, are murdering it. Go get your bag. Go get a bigger bag than Brady. And thanks for having me on. And uh, and uh, I'll mention to Sid that we got to get you uh, get him on the podcast. Oh, our, merci. Our show, your show. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup, sir. Merci beaucoup. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Paul Bizonet, Business. Yeah, it is. I almost went into a full French conversation, but we don't have enough time. <laughs> we don't have enough Next time, time. brother. Uh, we got two minutes until this show ends. Big thanks to Biz Nasty there. What a legend. Yeah. yeah. Arizona, though. Jesus. I didn't know the oh, Coyotes man. were in that place for three to four years. 5,000-seat arena, Arizona State. That'll be a fun place to play, though. If they pack it, it'll be like a pit, you know? Hey, it'd be good barn. Yeah, and if they Great don't barn. pack it, then it's going to be terrible. Bro, if there's nobody at you got to bust game. people in. you got to bust people in with free tickets. If I not. mean, they it's going to be they'd tough. They'd be paying actors to go in that game. 5,000 yeah, people okay. to be at a professional sports game? NHL. But there's a chance that there might not be. They have yeah, to, that's if yeah, everything goes perfectly. They're, they better have, you know. They have emergency college kids, right? Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, Biz. We have to do dollar beer night. Yeah. 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 Biz better wrestle a bear. Yeah. <laughs> in between one of the periods mm-hmm. for them. So they're going to have to do Zambelli fireworks. Yep. Mm-hmm. They're going to have to do concerts. Yeah. Yep. Imagine if they can't move 5,000 tickets. That would be terrible. As I guess they haven't found they the ground yet. Shoes. They haven't found the land to build a new place yet. Yeah, they haven't even broke ground. Yeah, dollar beer night would work though. Yeah, that they might crush. be worse next year. Oh, no. The team? Yeah. What was their average? Can't capacity? be worse. They're gonna be playing in an empty five thousand seat <laughs> barn. They might be worse. All right, no, that's good. the show. Sorry, it's such a bummer. Yeah. Sounds like coyotes are dead, as they should be. By the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a terrible, terrible animal. Keep You're right. Your yard. Terrible. Coyote should be dead. Yeah. yeah. Imagine being the Arizona Canadian geese. Like, how do you pick the least favorite animals? <laughs> mm-hmm. Coyotes, whatever. Um, what are you breaking news tomorrow, right, AJ? That's what yes. people can look forward to? Tomorrow's Wednesday. That's usually my day, yeah. Stay oh, tuned. Okay. Here we go. Oh. Stay tuned. Chris Mad Dog Russo is next. We'll see you in about 21 hours. Cheers. Oh, yeah. Nailed it. A little early. Did it start raining outside? It was a little cloudy. Really? I thought it was, it was, it was to clear up. Did you guys golf yesterday? What did you guys do yesterday? No. Just went for a walk around town. It was gorgeous outside. Yeah, it was so nice. Sat on the porch for a little. Same thing for you, AJ? It's gorgeous over there? Awesome. It is. Yeah, perfect. We should go live. We should go do that. We should get to you can go golf. Yeah, you should go golf for sure. It being nice weather really is it, oh my such God. a game. It's, it's amazing. I thought it, my wife and I had this conversation yesterday while we were sitting outside. And it was very comfortable, yeah. which is not able to do in Indiana for a large, large period of time. It's like everything's better. Everything. Everything, everything is better. Your energy, the vi- I let off the show with him, like energy, vibes, like everything's good when the sun is out, when it's shining. It's like you could see how people get a little bit of winter blues. In there yeah. Oh, yeah. Because the amount of good feelings that the sun brings. And if you're, you're from a place that has a lot of sun, like you're probably acting as if you're sick of it and you're passing and everything like that. Make sure you enjoy that. Yeah, thing. Don't take it for granted. Make sure you enjoy that thing. They're like, no, we have sun every fucking day, actually. So we try not to enjoy it. We actually put bigger blinds on down here. <laughs> Imagine but, if you didn't. Golly. It stinks. The Midwest. I mean, it is. Like, if it's you grind. look out the window and it's, like, kind of rainy and it's cloudy, it's like, all right, fuck it. I'm not even thinking about going outside today. I'm not even fuck. discussing it. Yeah, I'm going to watch TV I like having the next 12 though. hours. There's going to be a DoorDash coming. Yep. Mm-hmm. What's that, pal? I like I fall. Said- I like spring. I like seasons, but like that's why I always say North Carolina. They have all yes, the seasons, but Charlotte. they don't get the crazy extremes of all the seasons. Pretty I like, good weather. I like fall a lot. I think fall might yeah. be my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You are correct. To not For have fall, sure. So. Oh, yeah. Fall weather. With football obviously puts it way over the top. But I think like the fall yeah. weather is yep. the best by far. So I'm okay September, with October. It gets cold yeah. at night. Yeah, you start making fires outside. Oh, you can yeah. smell the fires Hell burning. Yes. Hell yeah. Yeah, so I'm a three season guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd much rather a three season. And instead of, you know, losing like spring, which is what we have lost yeah. as of late, let's just lose winter. Yeah. yeah. Ooh. If you want spring, summer, fall. That'd be sweet. Yeah, yes. fall all the way through March, through the end of March. That would be awesome. That'd be awesome. To AJ's point, that's what like the Carolinas have. Just fucking perfect. 
Really? They got mm-hmm. lakes too. Because during winter, they? it's kind of oh, yeah. it's kind of more they, like fall. They yeah. got beaches on the Atlantic too. They do have beaches on the Atlantic. Winter Great is climate. fun till Christmas. After Christmas, get me out. Of here. Yeah, but that's the only real winter. Right after Christmas is yeah. when winter actually yeah. starts. January, yeah, January, February. Yeah. January, February. Like, yes. we, we, everybody assumes December is winter. It's like, no, 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 no. no. January, February is the real motherfucker. Yeah. Is that how it is in Ohio? Yeah, I know people uh, the last couple of years that like play golf the day before Christmas. Like we had this weird like 50 degree days. Right. Well, in situations like this year, it freezing. wasn't. It was like January, February, March, April this year because there were still cold yeah. weeks in April. And snow. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're getting snowstorms post spring break. Enjoy it. Let's go one more phone call here because people have been on hold for a while. Let's go to Dom in North Carolina. Big Dom, what's going on? Is this Big on? Dom? Hey, Pat, how you doing? I'm good. Dom, how are you? All right, Boston Connor, this is for you. I don't... Are you fucking ready for tonight's event got... in downtown Raleigh? Yeah. I know when the boys are about to beat the hell out of the fucking Bruins in the loudest house in the motherfucking league. That was pretty good. But, I mean, did... That Thank guy, you, Don. That, that was awesome. That guy not here at Biz just said, Marshan's carrying his nuts around in a wheelbarrow, so I'm not too worried right now about that Hey, can that you guys game. put me on TNT, please? Every time I go on there, I score. I haven't scored. Please put me on there. Let me have a little pregame interview. Let me... Uh, that was in the garden, though. Not in front of 20,000 screaming Kaniacs, brother. Yeah, yeah. But that was also Ooh. without Swayman, and now we got Swayman back. And Marshan had two goals after that game and then one last game. The thing about the Kaniacs, though, is they will take the best chance. That place is a lot. Yeah, yeah. it is. Bill Cowher going to be there? Shut up. Yeah, that's my biggest worry yeah, is that that turncoat from Pittsburgh is going to show up Shut and ring the bell. I hope he's not there. That motherfucker. <laughs> Honestly, what the fuck, Bill? It's tough. Well. What right. if Belichick's doing it tonight? <laughs> what if Belichick's giving a motivational speech? No, Belichick uh, was just at the Celtics game. I assume he's going to be waving the flag at game six just in case we have to close out the series, which we probably will after we win tonight. And then all will be right in the world, and it'll be B's pens. Last Round phone two. call of the day here, Adam. The, listen. Massive chance. You Yins don't want that. Yeah. Oh, I you do. Don't you don't. I do. Louis Deming, feed me Louis Deming. What is up with his fucking glove side? They're saying everybody's yeah. saying they attack his glove side. How come none of our goalies can fucking play catch? What is the deal? This is the last five years of playoffs. Our goalie can't fucking play catch. They, can somebody just give somebody a fucking glove side? This problem, this guy, he's the opposite side, so it's actually the other corner, but it's the same goddamn side on goal. Is Louis Domingue's glove that terrible? The thing looks like the size of a fucking toilet seat, <laughs> but all I need the commentator say is, oh, they're picking apart his glove side. What is the issue? Is he a problem? Is he a liability back there? He's flashing the leather around. That's I mean, what I think. Yeah, he's, he's great goal. 30-year-old journeyman goaltender. Right? He's not a journeyman. He's, no, a he's found he's home. He's better time than now. He's mm-hmm. been searching for his home. They got a new goalie coach last year, though, and Jari's glove hand was much better during the regular season this year. How come Tom Barrasso, he was a loosey-goosey as well. How come he's not helping? <laughs> he, he, well, he's a noted prick. <laughs> what? Whoa! <laughs> yeah. Whoa! Oh, Barrasso also had the mitt on the same hand as fucking King Ming, so that's why I wondered. Uh, uh, sidewinder, you're saying. Yeah, uh, loosey-goosey. Silly cider. Uh, uh, silly, silly cider. Silly goosey. I think there's something in there. He only gave up two goals, didn't he? Yes, but 22 I'm... saves on 24 shots. Blocker. All they talk... <laughs> that's no shots. They only life. shot at 24 times? Yeah, yeah it's 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 the yeah. No, he's just defense. in our back check. You guys got the worst team in the league in the first round. What? I bet the Red Wings would beat the Rangers. Yeah, the Canes, yeah. dude. Anyways, <laughs> let's move along. Last phone call of the day. Is Phil Kessel in the in the playoffs? No, he's on no, the Coyotes. He's, 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 he's buying all the hot dogs in the barn. He spent the <laughs> last of their money to get him a private jet. Oh, no. And 20 gallons of pop. Them, <laughs> them not having another place before... And they, they don't. They haven't purchased the land yet. Not that they haven't started construction. They haven't found the piece of land to build it. And that place is up and coming everywhere. So I'm sure it's going to be easy to buy all that land. Let's go to the fence. Right in the heart of campus. <laughs> yeah. That's what he's basically saying. Yeah. Make it a university. Heavy. Make it an Arizona State team. Basically. That's it. Have they done that anywhere else? Is there any college town? How's the Arizona State's hockey team? Like, do they get to it's keep their home locker room, and the Coyotes have to use the other one? <sighs> A lot of questions. That's tough. We just learned about this a couple hours ago, but we will bring these to the forefront. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Andre Carson will ask you about this as yeah. well. Shane yeah. Gohan's not going to be happy. Let's go to uh, Adam <laughs> in Toledo, Ohio. Last call of the day here on the 5 Energy phone line. Go to 5 Use promo code MACV to receive 10% off your order of all the delicious 5 Energies that are possible at 5 What do you want to talk about, Adam? Pat, AJ, boys, how are we doing today? Hey, keep moving. Can you hear me? Hey, not too easy. All right. So, Pat, question for you. Yes, I've sir. noticed 
in uh, with punters and kickers sometimes that they like to wear two different cleats, one soccer, one NFL. Does it work? Would it work? Have you done it? Have you seen it? Also, bonus question. You doing this uh, punt, uh, the performance at the halftime show, you're going to come out with some special cleats, you're going to rock them, donate them, do something. Oh. How does this work? Yeah. Hey, Adam, I appreciate you thinking ahead for us. That's real. Probably should do a custom cleat for that. Yeah. I'd assume custom cleats for that from somebody. Good idea. Jot that down. Yeah. Somebody write that into the into the uh, the Siri thing or whatever. Yep. Let's go ahead and write that down. Um, the different cleats. That's. I, I don't think it's. I guess people are probably still doing it. I think as cleats have evolved naturally, every single one of them has gotten them all more conducive to kicking. Even offensive line cleats at this point are so thin and for moving quick that you can feel the ball and be able to kick. Now, it being a high top affects your ankle, which you need to have locked out or locked all the way up. So that's why you see all kickers wearing low tops. But the evolution of the technology of cleats has certainly helped kickers not have to wear the weird shit or go barefoot or do anything like that. I wore, um, I wore the Nike Speeds for a few years. You remember those? Uh, TD Speed Lows. Oh, yeah. Did you uh, – would you kick the, like kick in the same cleats or were you like – I don't know. Do some kickers kick in the same shoe for 20 years or do you switch like everyone else? Yeah, so I change my cleats like almost yearly. I uh, I would customize some Nikes. Never had a Nike. I had a Nike deal. I turned it down, which probably took the right stand-up things for that. Why I said I don't want your – money anymore but then the entire nfl became a nike league the next year so mm -hmm. i had to wear nike anyway so mm -hmm. kind of fuck you no fuck me almost in that whole situation <laughs> but uh yeah i would change my cleats there's some guys though that still are very you know ritualistic about it and you know superstitious about everything they have to have but you're just looking for a little bit of leather between foot and ball you don't want there to be a lot that could potentially affect anything you're looking for good feel on the ball some guys i have a little bit of a wider foot too so i couldn't wear those super skinny like latex leather ones that some guys are wearing i wish i could wear those that's what i would choose to wear but my feet are too fat to do so so i had some nikes that i wore some tempos those speeds though those are football cleats those are the best cleats of all time those things were so awesome. Mm -hmm. And a football cleat is allowed to have a cleat in the very front. So, like, in the very front, you're allowed to have a cleat. In the soccer, you're not allowed to have a cleat in the very front. But now it's almost like every cleat is based kind of the form. There's no more real front cleat other than baseball, I think, has the yeah. front ones. Everything else is kind of molded around the entire outside of the cleat as opposed to just parts, which is what the cleats used to be. So... There's a lot of different things I just said there, but the evolution of cleats has kind of changed everything for everybody in the kicking position. No, those aren't the originals, Ooh. I don't think. Those are like the mids. No. Yeah, those aren't the no, originals. No, I know the originals, uh, man, they were they were super thin if I'm thinking the, the same thing as you. Yeah, those aren't the originals. The those bottom are like, had the... They actually changed into those, and I was very pissed. Uh -huh. <clears throat> yeah, I was me very, too. very pissed. Everybody, I think everybody was. Actually. I wore the low tops in college, I believe. Low yeah, top the, speeds. You're with the, uh, the Isn't a big swoosh? Yeah, the, yes. like always around the entire front of the, the shoe, basically, was its own color. It was awesome. I fucking loved it. And then they stopped creating them. They were super thin. They super, were awesome. Super thin. Thin. Everybody loved them. They were very comfortable. They were wide too. My foot liked how wide it was. People claim people claim that guys were getting hurt wearing them. They weren't supportive enough. I know equipment people told me that because I was like, why would they not make these anymore? They were awesome. Yeah, they were comfortable. Felt like everybody wore them. I wore them just because, like, I would have worn them playing. If I was to play soccer, I would have wore those cleats if they didn't have the cleat up in the front. Like, no. Do you have hey? Do you have that Buckeye Hero uh, thing there? Because I'm wearing them. The, what I think in that picture. Yeah. Me and Schleg, see Your if that's what you're talking about. Your legs are cut about. off, aren't they? What? Your legs are cut off. Oh, are they? <laughs> they are, aren't they? Uh, it's ripped. That's not them. Damn. Damn. Mine were, yeah, my black and white, low top. They were super thin, super flimsy. They were amazing. Oh, yeah, Schleg was wearing the other ones. Fuck! <laughs> 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 All right, um... A lot of ads for that uh, Nike there. The people that are still kicking barefoot, by the way, we you should mock them, judge them. There's no reason to do it. No reason to do it. I saw somebody do it when I was in college. It's still happening. Somebody's doing it in. Look what I'm wearing. They were the, uh, they might have been vapors. Yeah, I don't think those were the speeds. Know. They were vapors. They were like yeah, they were the, the flimsiest they had. Yeah, fucking. That photo's awesome. Let's see if I can find them. Speed <laughs> Nike Speed TD. Is that what they were? 
they were. I mean, like, I would think someone would, like custom make shoes. I want to say it was like foot. 2005. Yeah, that's when I was. Yeah, that's yeah. Was, that was 2005. That picture. I don't know, man. I might be misremembering. I had them. That's why. I... Ah, fuck it. We'll have that for tomorrow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Let's go enjoy. Let's go enjoy the weather. A uh, big guest tomorrow, actually. Yeah. yeah. I think, Two. We, I think we have Singletary on tomorrow. Yep. Mm-hmm. Mike. Mike Singletary's on yes. tomorrow. Uh, Justin Thomas, the golfer, is on tomorrow, yep. I believe. Mm-hmm. And we might have some breaking news tomorrow. Okay. Ooh. Hey. So we got a big Wednesday, May 11th. Be a friend, tell a friend. We'll see you then. Hammer. Done. Uh, we'll have a direct link, I think, to watch that live. Uh, YouTube has capability to do that now, which is awesome. They'll start like 10, 15 minutes. If you want to wait in there, go take a piss, go eat some food. We can't thank you enough for joining us every single day. You all are the best people on earth. Hey, AJ, great show today. Tone, great show today. Thank you, Talk great to show. Table. Way to go. Way everybody in the back. Way to go today. Hell yeah. Big thanks oh, to yeah. Shams. Go, Pat. Big uh, thanks to Shams, Rapport, and Biz Nasty. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's enjoy the day. Let's enjoy life. Be nice to somebody. Bye.